It's the Ron and Fez Show, and I'm your announcer, Joe Pooh. And now, let's introduce your hosts, the guys helping Armani make clothes that are less gay. Here they are, Ron Bennington, Fez Watley, radio's blue light specials. Joe Pooh. Hello, hello. Who just called us the Blue Light Special. That's always complimentary. Right. The always complimentary <laughs> Joe Pooh. Ass face. I mean it in a good way. <laughs> Actually, I got a uh, email from somebody. I'll have to find it later on tonight. Begging you and I, Fez, to please get rid of Joe Pooh. <laughs> hey. They either love you or you hate, or they hate you, Joe. That's, That's the right. beauty of it. I love it. Nobody says about Joe Pooh, um, I really haven't thought about him much. <laughs> they either love you and say, would you two guys please shut up and let Joe Pooh talk? Or they go, please kill him. I get a lot more to kill him. Yeah, I didn't get any of the love stuff. Yeah, well, uh, but uh, I got volumes of the killums. <laughs> I was a history major. <laughs> I was an art major. Major a hole is what you've been. <laughs> Salute. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven is our toll free phone number. Hey, Friday. Yeah, we're just hanging out tonight. Friday nights, Fuzzy, always uh, a relaxing night. We uh, and from what I understand, not doing the six pack challenge tonight. What? We were going to do the six pack challenge tonight. It was going to be the best. Yeah, we're going in a whole different direction. Billy Staples, who got so drunk on four rum and cokes Wednesday night, I think it was. Yeah. In just a half hour's time with just such a few amount of drinks, he was going to go up against the ultimate lightweight, Al Dukes. Billy, Billy, freaks around the house. Not tonight, Fuzzy. It would have only taken two beers between them. Ah! Ah! He's not interested, my friend. And the contest would have been over. Oh, I am highly disappointed with our stunt man. He doesn't want to do it. Do it for John. He's going in a different direction. He's not going to do it for Johnny? No. Not for Johnny. Damn. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if he knows a Johnny. What Johnny? Johnny Walker. Did you ever notice this? <laughs> Every movie Matt Dillon's in, he at one point screams, let's do it for Johnny. Why is that? What is his obsession? I don't know. And who is this Johnny? A lot of times I'll even ask him in that movie, what? What are you talking about? There's no Johnny in this movie. Yeah, most of the films don't even contain a Johnny. Yeah. I would have liked it if he said, let's do it for the Karate Kid. Ralph Macchia. That was uh, maybe the last time we saw the, the Karate uh, Kid, wasn't it? Stay go, pony boy. Stay go. Yeah, but it was. He just fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, he was... Uh, the career started out strong enough. The the bad nephew on it is enough. Sure. Karate Kid movies, three of them. And then what happened? When he was on the on eight of it is enough, he was smoking. He got caught smoking. <laughs> he was the bad eight is enough kid. Yeah, right. On TV. The other ones were much worse in person. He was the eight is enough version of the ugly little blonde kid with glasses that ruined Brady Bunch. <laughs> Oliver. Cousin Oliver. He's a jinx, that kid. Goofy John! We should make this the Ron and Fez prom song. We have our prom, our senior prom later on this year. That'll be coming out when? May? June? 
Yeah. Do we have that? We're doing it in late May. Oh, good. Yeah. Nice. Because by June, everybody's already making their summer plans. That's true. Yeah. And we go our separate ways. And it's formal. And I'm telling you right now, uh, just a tuxedo jacket and jeans will not get you into this. <laughs> I always wear that T-shirt that just has the print of a tuxedo on the front. That's because you're witty. And the funny guy always wears that. I know he did on square pegs. You keep going like that, my friend. You'll be a prop comic. <laughs> Studying prop commentary. Why don't you wear the T-shirt that shows your heart, your rib cage, and everything like that? Like your skin's been pulled off. Like Slim Goodbody. You know, anytime, <laughs> let me just say this. Anytime you're trying to get a laugh out of your T-shirt, you're not a funny guy. Actual funny people don't start thinking... What's the funniest clothes I can wear? You won't see a lot of funny people wearing Hawaiian shirts, Fezzi. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they can get the laughs other ways. Usually with jokes. Right. With their actual wit. Not with their funny Hawkeye Pierce Hawaiian shirts like they just walked out of a mesh unit. Now, when Rory wears the glasses that have the eyeballs hanging down from the slankies, <laughs> yeah, I laugh with the rest of the guys. That's funny. Another one of Rory's favorite shirts that I like is the I'm with stupid and the arrow points up at his own face. That's cute. I like that one. Yeah. That goes over big at a lights out party. His other arrow shirt that I like is when it just says baby and points to his <laughs> belly. That beer belly he's got. I always thought it was pointing to his penis. <laughs> like he has a baby penis. <laughs> well, he do. It stopped growing at age one and a half. One of these days, that little sack's going to drop and he's going to be in business. Now, Joe, did you just moan to that? And I'm like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, I thought, oh, like, I'd rather have a big penis. That's what all my men have. <laughs> Anytime a guy's telling another guy his penis is not big enough, he's too interested. <laughs> Look how throat Rory got that the conversation <laughs> deflected. Uh, Ricochet just... ball busting. Hey, uh, Tony, Tony, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. Hey, Tony. What's going on? Uh, Nada, we're hanging out. Ah, uh, cool. But Ralph Macho was in on my cousin Vinny. That's right. Uh, and did amazing work. And why he didn't get the Oscar, I don't know. <laughs> he did get the Oscar under the name Marissa Tomei. Uh, absolutely. I, my favorite Ralph Macho movie is where he was the blues guitarist who sold his... Uh, sold Crossroads. The guitar. Crossroads, yes. And then yes. I think, didn't he have to have some kind of... Guitar showdown against Steve Vai. Steve Vai, yep. Now, Why any... can't he get in a movie where there's not a showdown? All right, now, <laughs> right, here's the thing. All right, thanks a lot, man. In real life, does anything ever get settled through a contest, <laughs> a battle of the bands, a football game? In movies, they keep going, you know, all right, uh, if you win the boat race, right. then you can go to college. Right. What? <laughs> That John Candy movie, Summer Rental. Summer Rental. The big boat race, and you have to pay for our stay in Florida. <laughs> you pay our rent for a month in Florida. No, after it was over, wouldn't you go, F you, pal? <laughs> Try and get it out of me. Get a lawyer. <laughs> Maybe if judges would just uh, tell people, let's just settle this with a battle of the bands. Or let uh, Rory wear one of his funny Hawaiian shirts, and we'll have a joke off. And just lighten the mood that way. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dutch. Dutch, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. Hey, Dutch. Gentlemen, good evening. How are you, Dutchy? What can I'm we do for you, pal? Dutch. Fez. Dutch. He's my Dutch boy. <laughs> I'm the Dutch boy. Yeah. Fez, you brought back a wave of horrible memories of Slim Goodbody. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love him on Mike Douglas. He came to my school when I was in grade school. Yeah, you know, for one of those, like, health-conscious days or whatever. Are you sure it was Slim a good body or not a really ill person? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It was Lord Slim Boyle. <laughs> but they had, like, the kindergarten through the eighth grade class in the auditorium. When he came out, the kindergarten kids were screaming and crying because they thought he was in a horrible accident. I don't know what it is, but I like anything that, uh, any bit that freaks out children <laughs> and they start running. Much like Fez. Most of I... the time, uh, people don't realize that small children, when... Let's say you're like four years old, okay? Humans already are four or five times your height. Right. So it's like being a land of the giants. It's like walking around now and seeing people 28 feet tall, okay? If you're at the, the height you are now. So at that, when they're that much bigger than you, you don't want to see them in scary makeup or <laughs> white face or with fangs. 
And yet they feel like they need to do that. Or jumping at you. Yeah. They already move fast enough. Right. Don't leap out at the children. They don't need to rush you. Hey, Mikey, Mikey, you're on my face. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, buddy. Good, hey, I was going to talk to you about the pay-per-view with the Ralph Macchio conversations much better. Okay. I hated him in Karate Kid 2. Here's a kid who gets his ass handed to him for one hour and 45 minutes of the movie. So, okay, comes to the big showdown. You expect him to kick ass, do something. He lands one kick and wins the competition. That's the thing. That's what I think he's always trying to tell us. That if you get a really funny and weird stance and get a good kick in, yeah. uh, things are going your way. That's it. And yeah. apparently that was the only point you needed to score to win yeah. that competition. Yes. Yeah. One point, stupid move, stupid face, you're done. Next move, winner take all. All right. See you later. I happen to disagree. I think that Karate Kid 2 was much better than Karate Kid 3. Now, Karate yes, because it had the girl. Yeah. Karate Kid. The girl that played the guy in that other movie where she won the Oscar or whatever it was. That's Karate Kid 4. Was it? I Karate cra Kid 2, they went to Japan. Yeah. And he had to fight a Japanese kid. Were they oh, in Japan yeah, or like Korea? They were okay, in a real. Okay. I mean, they were in a really scummy area, whatever it was. It wasn't like Tokyo or anything if they were in Japan. <laughs> it seemed like they went back in time, like to a feudal place. Into the Shogun days. <laughs> right. Well, and like they had those no cars or anything there. And, and they had those crazy Japanese New Year's favors. They were like tapping them back and forth as they were fighting. And then Karate Kid 3, they started with them getting uh, coming back from the airport. Okay. Right. And from the going to Japan. Like, the guy that looked like Steven Seagal tripped them into being that other guy? Right, Terry Silver. Oh, okay, okay. I, I yeah. Now, the beauty of that was, yeah, I think that was almost like a play on uh, Steven Seagal, though, wasn't it? And yeah. then he was like some wealthy guy. Who right. was going to buy up every dojo in town? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and John Kreese had saved his life in Nam. And then and somehow. And that's why he bought Cobra Kai dojo. Yeah, it didn't, and then at the contest at the end, he ended up losing all his money somehow. <laughs> you know, he lost his contracts <laughs> of or course. whatever. Yeah. Well, I think they found out he was dumping nuclear waste. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And and that's, that's a nice action. little sidebar. All right, here's another thing they do in those kind of movies. The really rich guy will just be signing contracts all the time. Right. This, uh, this is needed for your signature, sir. And he's just signing away. They did that in No Hold Board with Hulk Hogan. Right. He's a wealthy guy yeah. that was yeah. signing stuff. Yeah, right. he was yeah. constantly signing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and in No Hold Board, Hulk Hogan also went everywhere. In his wrestling clothes. Uh, right, yeah. He's in the back of a limo in his wrestling stuff. Well, I'm going to the big meeting. Well, maybe you'd like to put some pants on, Hulk. <laughs> yeah. You look I'm at yourself. You're in leotard. I'm sorry, Rip. I and then, you rip. And then yeah. he do that stupid thing with his hand. It was like the secret Satan sign. Uh, you know, yeah. or something like that. You uh. know that there's always a bad movie when the, the guys in the film have some kind of wacky handshake that only they <laughs> like that ends with them pointing at each other, whatever. Yeah. All right, Roy just cringed because that's what him and his roommates do all the time. And when he pushed the kid out of the wheelchair and Hulk got pissed. Yeah, right. All right yeah. <laughs> and again, let's end this whole thing in a contest. Sure. Gotta have the one final showdown. Where we destroy the rich man's studio. Right. Yes, and the rich guy screaming, going, <laughs> no! Never! <laughs> All right, see you later, Mikey. See you later, man. My favorite line in No Holds Barred is when Hulk Hogan busts his way out of the limo. Yeah, right. And then he grabs the limo driver, and Hulk Hogan goes, What's that I smell? <laughs> and the limo driver's crying, and he goes, Duty! <laughs> right. Because for some reason, if you do crap your pants, you, ta you talk like you're two. <laughs> like I'm sure ill people do. Right. Duty! I think that we knew there that we were too old to be sitting in the theater when there were so many duty jokes. 877 <laughs> is our toll-free phone number. Hey, uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Mike. Hey, Ron Fez. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Um, is it me or Mr. Miyagi never ages? I mean, from happy days to the karate kid, that's at least a 15-year gap, right? Yeah, the man was born 80. No, yeah, that's the beauty of it. Once you hit a certain age, you're not going to look older. <laughs> like, if you don't see a guy, if you see a guy when he's 95, you don't mm -hmm. run into him again until he's 103. He's not going to look older to you. And did you notice that he gained an accent through the years? Right. Yeah, got a lot. That looks fuzzy. Sit. Sit. 
Oh, yeah, these are the great Karate Kid movies. Right. I like that Karate Kid 3 where he wouldn't train Daniel. He just absolutely refused to. Because he was doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. And then Daniel finally, after they, Daniel gets beat up again, he finally says, Now will you train me? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, start waxing the car. What? Karate, not for fighting. What? <laughs> All you do is practice kicking and punching, yet I can't kick and punch someone? Karate for discipline. And then there should be sit-ups that you're doing. That would be discipline. <laughs> All right, my other favorite Karate Kid scene is when he falls down the hill. The kids are chasing him, and he ruins his bike. <laughs> and he's, dra he's dragging his bike over, and he's just smashing it on the dumpster. This reminds me of something Joe Poo would do. And he throws his bike in the dumpster, and he goes, Stupid bike! Stupid bike! I hate a stupid bike! <laughs> his mother comes out. Nothing was wrong with that bike. You got your ass kicked and they broke your bike. The bike was fine. It cost me hundred hundred ten dollars. Why can't we just go home? Get in the dumpster and get the bike out. Why can't we just go home? That's good stuff. None of the bad kids uh, just start wearing skulls on their face in that movie. <laughs> hey, uh, Bobby. Bobby, you're on our run of fuzz. Hey, Bobby. Hello. Yeah. How about the best uh, boat race of them all? One crazy summer. One crazy summer with when the great. Took, when they took the guy Ferrari and cut it in half. Yeah. And, and that, uh, of course, made a really fast boat. <laughs> and that was for the, the big house on the beach. Yeah. And everyone was happy. And of course, uh, you know, uh, all right, I won't be building this waste plant on the beach and taking your grandmother's uh, house. If you can beat me in a race. That's all you have to do. If I'm, I'll, I'll uh, drip up all these contracts right. with the contractors <laughs> in the city. If I'm the rich guy and I have all this stuff going, I'm not risking it on a flip of the coin. <laughs> you don't even get in to see me if I'm that wealthy. And I'm telling you right now, now that movie is almost probably 20 years ago. John Cusack has not changed his act or look. <laughs> or what I owe him. Nothing about role. him has changed in 20 years. Same role in every movie. Yes. Everything ends with a boat race with him. <laughs> Serendipity. Let's have a boat race. What? Around Manhattan. What? All right, later, boys. All right, sit. 877-692-1027. Hey, uh, Richard, you're on running Fez. Hey, Richard. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Card number 1734. <laughs> uh, by the way, let me just say this. If you uh, have a big-ass card... Check your emails tonight. It's very important. Ooh. Very good. Thank you. Finally, Al is sending out an important email. Finally. Yeah. His resignation? Yeah. <laughs> yes! I just want to say Karate Kid 2 was filmed in the island of Okinawa. All right. Now, that Okinawa. makes sense. That makes sense to us, Fezzi. All let right. Us, let us not forget the classic Pat Morita, Jay Leno movie, Crash Course. Crash Course, where <laughs> Jay Leno. Hey, Fantastic. Hey. He just made these little voices. Try to watch it sometime and think to yourself, should he have ever worked again after that night? Absolutely awful. Where's the justice? All right. Boy, howdy, gentlemen. All right. So, Boy, howdy. Who ended up being the cool one in that movie? <laughs> Pat. Pat Morita was like the Jackie Chan of that. <laughs> hey, uh, Val. Val, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Val. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I want to tell you I met Hulk Hogan today. Yeah? Where at? Yeah, he, he said he's going to be in the Rumble. All uh, right, thanks for calling in your new retarded character voice. Uh, yeah, and, uh... Fez, do you think uh, Hulk Hogan will be in the uh, Rumble this uh, weekend? No. 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 He I wasted. <laughs> wasted on him, right? Yeah. No. Hogan won't be there. They'll promote that before they bring him back. If they ever bring him back. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, maybe I'm crazy here, uh, but Hulk Hogan, one of the better actors I've ever seen in my life. I'm not saying he's De Niro, but he's Pacino. Was he Mr. Nanny? Yeah, Mr. Nanny. He wasn't nanny. the nanny. That was no, a, that was Fran That Rusher. one actually made money. He was Mr. Nanny where he put on a tutu. All right, yeah. He was a nanny who sometimes beat people up. Was that the one where he was the spaceman? No, that was different. I don't know the name of that whole movie. He always Pokemon has to take care of kids in right. every movie. He ends up babysitting. No, and it's always Hulk Hogan and a five-year-old walking down the street. Right. Why Hulk is in his wrestling gear. <laughs> it looks a little homoerotic pedophilish. 
especially when you start throwing in the choo-choos. Hey, uh, Mike, Mike, you're on a fence. All guys from outer space were dressed like wrestlers, right? Right, they were you all wrestlers. <laughs> you wore the same thing. Yeah. And they had very pointy shoulders <laughs> in that space movie. <laughs> That, that was Miyagi's best movie with the car. They used to speed the film up with a high-tech technology where the car went real fast. They sped the film up. So you're a big Mr. Miyagi fan, huh? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Uh, remember Shinto from the uh, second one? Miyagi! Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't Miyagi! Be? Now, that was good because they kept forcing Miyagi right. into the fight. Yeah. Right. He didn't want to fight. What was Mr. Miyagi's shame in the second one? What, were, what was he, uh... Oh, he farted in a temple, in a Japanese temple. <laughs> oh, no. On a he boot. left his father. Right, yeah, he left. And I think, didn't he get abroad or something, too? That's what made everybody mad at him. Because oh, it was God, supposed to... That was a deep moment for Mr. Miyagi. You start to tear up, you know, yeah. you're up with the woman. They're doing a little no. tea scene. I bring dishonor to island. <laughs> Look around you, pal. But remember how hot that little Chinese girl was in that movie? Right. Why didn't he take her back to L.A.? Yeah, he goes back to L.A., then he finds the other girl that they had to plant bonsai trees with, hanging off a cliff. I saw the previews, I went to it, hoping it was going to be a uh, three-hour rough ma macho Chinese girl bang fest. No such luck. Nothing, she didn't even show up. And then the next one, the next karate kid right. was uh, Hillary Swank. Right, so now you have the karate kid without the karate kid in it anymore. <laughs> Who went on to win an Oscar for being a boy? Hey, uh, Nick, Nick, you're on Rana Fest. What a weird effing world. Hey, hey Nick. Hey, what's up? Yeah. I'm sorry, you guys made me choke on that last one. No, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, that's okay. Um, oh, for uh, the other guy, it wasn't Shinto, it was Sato, Miyagi's friend. Ah, Sato. Miyagi. <laughs> Sato, why can't we be friends? You, you foot and foot and temple. <laughs> So what can we do for you, Nick? Oh, excuse me. Um, you guys talking hey, about we eat pretzels? Um, no, I was just trying to drink a bottle of water and I started. Well, you need your fluids. You need yeah, your fluids. You need the fluids. You guys talking about John Cusack? It made me think of the kid from Better Off Dead, the newspaper delivery kid. I want my two dollars. Now, great movie, and let's settle everything with a ski race. <laughs> now, you never, now, you never see snow during the entire movie. It looks like it's summertime, yet they all go to a mountain that looks like Everest to have a ski race. You're on the ski team. You'll never make the ski team. I like any movie where there's the big competition to sell anything yeah. or they destroy a major piece of property. Well, that always happens no matter what, right? Right, like uh, the real genius with the popcorn house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the end of that with the popcorn blows up and we have everybody wants to rule the world. I would like to just have that as the tape and forget the first two and a half hours. The Jiffy Pop house. All right, thanks, Nick. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thanks for reminding us that sometimes you solve your problems with a ski race. It doesn't have to be a battle of the bands, a boat race, or even a big Jiffy Pop house. <laughs> we'll get even with him. We'll put Jiffy Pop in his house and shoot it from a laser from outer space. Uh, instead of going through that trouble, what do you say the three of us go over there with a bag of nickels and beat the hell out of him? It'll save us about $750,000. Or how about you just study and stay in school that way? Do something on your own. Instead of ruining someone's home with popcorn. Alex, Alex, you're on a fence. Hey, Alex. Hey, guys. Yeah. Um, um, what about um, Big Daddy when that ended up in the golf tournament with the guy over the, um, over his grandmother's house? All right, that was not Big Daddy. That was Happy Gilmore. Oh, Happy Gilmore. Right. Happy yeah. Gilmore. Now, Adam Sandler does a great j job of finishing everything off with a big contest. Morris High School sucks. Uh, sometimes, you know, it could be just an IQ test. Sure. That you're taking in front of the whole school. Why everybody would want to show up to see this, uh -huh. I don't know. And the winner gets to an entire chain of <laughs> hotels nationwide. Winner gets to own Hilton Inc. <laughs> right. How is that ever going to happen? Going back to school to prove to Dad that I'm no fool. Oh, Doyle's rule! <laughs> Uh, Mike, Mike, you're on run Fest. Hey, Mike. Hey, yeah, what about in Footloose, where you get to settle everything with a good tractor race? 
<laughs> well, that was a kind of a play off of uh, the James Dean movie, Rebel Without a Cause, where they did a chicky race. Only in Footloose, they did it with tractors that went about one and a half to two miles per hour. <laughs> so, and the, you know, people were actually nervous with these two slow tractors that probably would have just bumped each other and stopped. The tension! I couldn't believe it. And, that and, then, and then you of, have the big dance-off. Yeah, a big dance-off yeah. that lets us know everything's going to be good. <laughs> uh, Meatballs ended everything with uh, Woody the Wabbit right. in a big race. And, of course, let's prove that we're the better kids by winning the Summer Camp Olympics. Yeah, exactly. Woody the Wabbit, he's one into foot waste. Yeah. And the basketball game where they pulled down the other team's pants. That was good, though. <laughs> Uh, Rich, Rich, you're on our run of us. Hey, Rich. How about Over the Top? Oh, sure. Great Sylvester Stallone movie. Remember this line? I turned my head around. It's like a switch. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> he was great in that. And again, he had a small boy with him that he was trying to relate to. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. A kid who didn't understand his dad's truck driving, arm wrestling ways. Yeah. And any time <laughs> that uh, you really can't get along with a child, win a contest in front of him. He will love you for it. So Stallone had done boxing. Mm -hmm. He had done wrestling with the Paradise Alley. Right. So that's really left. That's physical. I guess arm wrestling now. He also did a movie uh, where he, Victory, where they settled everything with a. They settled World War II with a soccer match. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Where because they won the soccer match, the people of Germany helped them all escape. <laughs> Help them escape a World War II concentration camp. Fortunately, Pele was being held against his wishes. <laughs> Fortunately, was... Pele had been captured during World War II. And Sylvester Sloan, because he'd never played before, had no idea that he was probably one of the best goalies in the world. <laughs> All right, here's one for you, Ronnie. Yeah. Back to school with Ronnie Dangerfield. Uh, diving. Right. Diving will settle everything. The diving competition and, of course, again, the academic competition <laughs> like uh, Billy Madison. That had one of, actually one of the best scenes of all time with F. U. Vonnegut. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> right, Kurt Vonnegut, Vonnegut shows up at his house <laughs> to write his paper. <laughs> then he gets it back. Uh, no, <laughs> I've never seen more of a lack of knowledge of Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> Written by Kurt Vonnegut. Here's uh, Kevin. Kevin, you're on our round of fest. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Kevin. Hey, guys. Hey, man. How you doing? Cool in the gang. Uh, Tilt. Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. A little scene in Brooke Shields' film where it all was about the big pinball championship. Correct. <laughs> and uh, she was a pinball wizard. There had to be a twist. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you very she much. She played Charles Durning. Yeah, she did because uh, Charles Durning looks like an athletic pinball player. <laughs> Charles, Charles, <laughs> Charles Durning? Charles Durning was the fat man. Charles Durning just took a paycheck. You can't blame him for it. <laughs> and he, of course, had been the champion for years, and a 12-year-old girl who found some reason to get naked right. ended up winning the pinball tournament and winning everything. Oh, that's cool. Because there's a lot of times that we'll put up a million-dollar pot on a pinball match. Ronnie, I'll throw this one out to you. The uh, Last Starfighter, where... You pick the savior of the universe mm -hmm. by how well they play video games. I'll tell you this. The, if I went home tonight, Last Starfighter was on, I'm staying up. <laughs> I will watch I it. am staying up. He was, and again, kid not too weirded out that he went from uh, uh, actually playing a uh, video game mm -hmm. into being uh, an actual Starfighter. Mm -hmm. Didn't throw him. Fighting aliens in space. Uh... Jerry, Jerry, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Jerry. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? What good, you? good, good. Uh, I don't want to ruin the uh, ending for anyone who hasn't seen Urban Cowboy, <laughs> but uh -oh. that movie ends with a bull riding contest. Now, there, and... now, let me just point this out. In this film, a bull riding contest, any contest really, can save a marriage. Yeah. Oh, that's good. No. Yeah. I had a punch can always save a marriage because women get really, really hot when they see you punch other people. <laughs> they punch the, when you punch the other guy that they like. See, women have a tendency to pick the toughest guy. That's what they base their, uh, love on, Fez. Well, that's good to know. I'm yeah. gonna remember that. That's now. why Mike Tyson's in so many great relationships. He is beloved by women everywhere. All right, thanks, Jerry. He's a yeah. matinee idol. That's a good one, though. When she saw how well he could win that uh, ride and win, 
She had to have them. Hey, uh, Jamie. Jamie, you're on Ronifest. Hey, Jamie. Hi. What about Roadhouse with uh, Patrick Swayze? And he saved the town. And... Yeah, he saved the town by uh, doing a great job of keeping a bar safe. Yeah. <laughs> that was a classic. Yeah. Bye, guys. Yeah. Rory's our Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Rory is the Patrick Swayze here, and Fez is Terry Funk, <laughs> who's starting trouble all the time. <laughs> He's the enforcer. All right, here's uh, Drew. Drew, you're on. I'm Ronnie Fez. Hello, Drew. Yo, Ronnie. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the deal? Listen, remember nerds with the Olympics and all? <laughs> all, all I remember is a bunch of bombs and and everything, but I remember nerds having some stupid competition also, guys. They had the frat Olympics, because right. you really don't feel good about your frat unless they do some kind of great game with a banana. Sure, you had to win the frat Olympics to take over the Greek council and get to make every decision on campus. Not like they have an administration for that. I thought Fez uh, grew up in a frat house, but it was just a fat house. That family of yours. <laughs> They're big. Although I did try to join Lambda 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 when I went away to women's college. <laughs> hey, Matt, you're on Ron and Fez. They put me in Omega Moo. That my pie. Matt, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Matt. Hey, you guys go back to the beach? Back to the beach, which was Frankie Avalon. Right. A wonderful Frank, they job. With, and they ended it with the, uh, with the surf off. I like any movie that ends in the surf off. That was also the, uh, the Hawaiian movie. North Shore. I love North Shore. Where the kid learned how to be a uh, a great uh, surfer in a wave pool in Phoenix. He goes to surf the big waves and becomes friends with Turtle, who says, take care of me. Not. Right, because Turtle got a little jealous. Ask me to ride? Never. Howley. Yeah. <laughs> Turtle was a little jealous because that kid was getting so close with uh, Gregory Harrison, Gonzo. Sure. <laughs> if I found out that somebody else... See, sometimes that kid, he reminds me of Wonder Boy. He just wants to be closer to me. Right. That kid, the kid that's new on North Shore is Wonder Boy, and everyone else on the staff is Turtle. Right. Ronnie, hang <laughs> with me? Not. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'm Gregory Harrison. Why isn't he around? I'm doing more. The guy's amazing because he's a soul surfer, Fez. Sometimes right. he'll just sit out there and from, you know, he taught us that you really have to study the waves and even what's underneath and then start off surfing on a door. Oh, okay. If you surf on a door first, eventually you'll end up winning a contest. And watch out for that coral, yeah. all right, because it'll leave scars. Now, how cute was the girl in that movie, too? Nia Peoples? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to her, Fez? Nia. Yeah. Not. <laughs> Nia, no. And what happened to Turtle? Turtle should have been a huge actor. He should have been Keanu Reeves. Now, there was another movie. It was about a kid who was like either from California or Hawaii. He knew how to surf as it was coming into the movie. And he ended up having to go live with his aunt and uncle in Cincinnati where there's no waves, man. And, and he solved that. Remember how he won at the end with, his, with skating? With skateboarding. With skateboarding or skating? I thought it was uh, regular inline skating. Okay. It was down a big hill. I can't think of the name of that movie. But he used his surfing knowledge right. and put it to good use in skating. Right. And that little redheaded Seth Green. Yeah. Scott Evil was in that movie. Now, everybody there was just into hockey. Hockey right. meant everything to them. <laughs> so his surfing ways brought nothing but trouble. Yeah. And he was constantly in trouble in that in that movie. All right, Fez and I probably just went off for the last 40 minutes and make no sense to anybody who uh, has a life away from TV and cable TV. Sorry. 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 Uh, but it'll be a good show tonight, we promise you. Yeah. We'll Everything's not going to be just movies with contests at the end. <laughs> we'll talk about other things. Right. Much more exciting from time to time. And there'll be a Friday Fezzatorial coming up. I want to hear this one. What's it about? This, Ronnie, I'm a little bit concerned about the president choking on that pretzel. Ah. So, so you'll take a good long look at it? Yes, I will. Some things that need to be done. Also, we'll have Nicole in tonight. This is the uh, young lady who... Uh, gets off smelling people's armpits. She really enjoys that. When we had the uh, fetish crowd in yeah. on Monday, we uh, got to hear from Nicole. Sweet Melissa is uh, actually here in person tonight, Fez. Wow, okay. Because it's that time where you and I have to actually cut some more promos. <laughs> right, now. Those, we make, two, those two weeks went fast. We make poor Sweet Melissa sit through <laughs> ten promos with us. <laughs> so there'll be a uh, studio session right. after the show today. Right. 
We'll be the we're going back in the studio, Ronnie. We're, se- <laughs> we're uh, settling this with a promo off. <laughs> <laughs> this promos, man. Gets to rule the station. Actually, a lot of people are coming up with a lot of uh, great endings to movies, too. Competition? Competitions. <laughs> contest movies. So all that coming up. 877-692-1027. The Ron and Fez Show. Ron and Fez. 1027 WNEW. The president chokes on a pretzel. Maybe I should cough up a pesatorial. Well, well, well. President George W. Bush is making a full recovery from passing out after choking on a pretzel. And I haven't been this nervous about a president eating something since that time back in 87, when an already confused President Reagan got into the litter box, made himself a cake, and sat there singing happy birthday to me with kitty litter on his chin. But what really salts my pretzel stick is the fact that nothing is being done to prevent this from happening to President Bush again. After after all, here's a man who chokes on sentences like they were ballpark pranks. Steps have to be taken to keep him from choking on food. I say first, we change his menu. No more hard snacks. No more nachos, fritos, doritos, or any of those other delicious Latin snacks that end in ooze. President Bush needs softer things to eat, like Jello brand gelatin jigglers, those cans of Ensure that old people drink, or really, really melted ice chips. You know, to be on the safe side, couldn't all the presidential snacks just be handled by IV? Secondly, portion control. I know the president is proud of where he's from, but does all his food have to be Texas size? He insists on his PB&J being cut into the shape of the Lone Star State, that he tries to eat the whole thing at one bite. Give him tinier snacks and let him pretend he's eating Rhode Island. Next, mealtime conversation. If President Bush gets upset while he's eating, he's more likely to choke again. So let's avoid topics that anger and frustrate him. Things like Osama bin Laden, Enron, and Long Division. Of course, we should be ready in case his choking reoccurs. Why was there no one to help the president? Where's that guy that carries the briefcase with the launch codes? Couldn't he have hit the president in the back with that briefcase to stop him from choking? Or at least been there to hold his arms up and make the president say, baby, so we knew he could breathe. And if George W. is going to keep feigning now every time he sees a pretzel or a Pringles, it's time for a change of furniture in the White House. No more of this Martha Washington, Dolly Madison, Mary Todd Lincoln crap that the president can bust his face on. Let's replace that 200-year-old stuff and get some inflatable furniture from Spencer's Gifts or some nice soft beanbag chairs. Actually, I'd feel a whole lot better knowing the President of the United States was enjoying his meals by safely sitting in a ball pit. You know, this whole thing reminds me of growing up in Cornelis Park, Florida, where if someone is choking, we do the mime lick maneuver, where you act like you're trapped in a box till someone comes to help. But it was there that I realized how scary someone choking on snacks could be. I remember Mother being out in our barn with our handyman named Bobo. I overheard Mother gagging. And from what Bobo was saying, apparently she was choking on a pair of nuts. She must have been really hungry, too, because she tried to get the whole sack in her mouth. But it sounded like Bobo got her a hot drink that helped her, because he said something about a tea bag being good for her. And that... Wait a minute. Mama put Bobo's sack into it. Betty who? President Bush, you gave us quite a scare with your choking and fainting. I was actually so upset that I longed for those days of the Clinton administration, where there was only the good kind of gagging in the White House. President Bush, be safe and know that we're behind you. It's the safest place to be if you start choking again. And let us all clear our own air passages and tell you we're here, we're queer, we will not disappear. This has been my presentorial. Thank you. Let Ronnie know that the fezzatorial's done. Friday! Hey, we're back on the air. It's Ron and Fez. You missed the fezzatorial, didn't you? I thought it was coming up. It was coming up when we went to the last commercial break. Fez, you don't understand. I was just out there talking with uh, Nicole, Nicole, the armpit girl. She's the girl that gets turned on smelling guys' armpits. Yeah. And Jill, her sister, they brought a bottle of tequila... Nice. They want to drink about some uh, against somebody. I'm sure they're not uh, familiar that we have the champion drinker. Ah, ah. 
Billy, Billy, thanks around the house. Call Billy Staples in. Staples! Sober up! Now! Billy. <laughs> Billy, Nicole, the... Uh... Slam time. We can't always remember slam time. <laughs> slam time doesn't even have its own thing. He's trained for it. <laughs> Give him a treat, man. Oh, look. It's F time. Look who it is. It's F'd up troop. Oh, that's... <laughs> Billy, the girls brought a bottle of tequila in. You want you in? No, I'm going to pass. Uh, not a tequila guy. Not a tequila guy, Fuzzy. Really? You want Joe your Joe Pooh, are you a tequila guy? I can't. I start stealing like a Mexican. <laughs> That's wrong. That That's is wrong. so wrong. And it brings racism into a show yeah. that has nothing but uh, love for everybody. I need uh, uh, some kind of a song that says white people are afraid of Spanish people. Get Andy I mean, Franco on the phone. What about the hawk? The hawk? What do you think of tequila? I love it. <laughs> you love it? How do you think it tastes? Awesome. All right, Fezzy. Oh, okay. Now, we've kept uh, the hawk away from drinking because uh, the night that the hawk drank, it was kind of a rough night around here. Yeah. When hawk drinks, or at least the last time he did after a Christmas office party, he was Mr. Honesty. Right. He really let everyone know what he thought of him. Yeah, don't do, get into the whole honesty thing, Hawk. Just enjoy some tequila. Can Do you think you can drink and be as dishonest as ever? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, lie through your teeth. <laughs> All right, All right we're going to get into that. We'll have the girls yeah. in in just a moment. Hey, uh, Rob, Rob, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Rob. What's up, guys? Hey, man. I got to answer to your question before about that movie. Yeah. You know that fruit bag that was a uh, surfer and then he became a skater? It's Airborne. Oh, Airborne. Airborne. Very good, my friend. Okay. And I got another one for yeah. you. That, that little fruitcake, Fred Savage. Yeah. And that movie, The Wizard. Remember with that little corny boy that played video games real good? Oh, yeah. And they traveled across the country getting the crap beat out of him? <laughs> yeah, that was, that didn't get a big push. No, uh-uh. No, right. but it was just a pretty ridiculous storyline. All right, thanks yeah. a lot, man. Uh, Appreciate care. it, Rob. So, Airborne was the movie of the kid who moved from California to Cincinnati. Yeah. And couldn't surf and was such an outsider. Well, he kept using words like gnarly and mm. curl. And he right. was in Ohio. And couldn't understand why they didn't have any waves. Right. How you... And yeah. why they weren't just going mad without any waves, man. And no one likes it when the new kid comes to town telling you how bad your town sucks compared to anywhere <laughs> else. You got to whip his ass. <laughs> I actually voted for the townies in that one. Speaking of which, Fuzzy, that probably was one of the first, let's end this thing with a contest, uh, the bicycle contest that was at the end of the movie where the kid pretended he was Italian through the whole thing. Oh, I love that. The Cutters. Yeah, the Cutters were in the movie. What was the name of the film, though? What was it? It was actually the first time... Paul Dooley was in it. He Paul, was the dad. Paul Dooley was the dad. The kind of cool cutter was Dennis uh, Quaid. Oh, right, yeah. He was the good-looking uh, cool cutter. Daniel Stern was in it. He was the geeky guy. <laughs> All and, geeky. And then you had that blonde guy that was in a lot of stuff. Uh, Who Josh, thought he was Italian. I believe it's called Breaking Away. Breaking Away. Very good, Joe Poo. I think that film won an Oscar. I'm not even sure. Wow. So that's probably why we got so many contest uh, films after that. <laughs> hey, uh, Jason. Jason, you're on Ron Hey, what's going on, guys? Cardholder 2423. Hoo-ah. I just, I'm surprised nobody's mentioned the greatest competition to end a movie movie, uh, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Come on now, Bill, Billy Baru. Now that you're willing to bet everything on a golf tournament with a child in it. <laughs> and a gopher. Yeah. And a gopher who sure. really had a personality all of his own. So there was the big bet tournament, mm -hmm. and then, of course, there was also the caddies tournament to uh, <laughs> to win the scholarship. Yeah, sure. There was, there was nothing. I mean, it was a pretty complicated plot. It was a complex film. And in the middle of it, the Irish girl thought she was pregnant. Oh, Satan. <laughs> he had me, period. Yeah, that's never happened to any kid who thinks he knocked up somebody. Believe me, if you think you knocked her up, you did. It's not your problem, Johnny. I didn't expect you to marry me. And you never get a girl to tell you that either. Right. Literally, you're 15 and it's all your problem. So, and anyone who enjoys Caddyshack will throw out this piece of information again. Our own Paulo, your life's a movie Oscar blubs, all through Caddyshack. 
playing the dim-witted waiter. That was his claim to fame. Yep, he's the waiter who gets knocked in the pool during Caddy Day. Matt, you're on Ryan Fez. Yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah. Um, what about bad news bears? Remember they lost at the end? Walter Matthau hands them all beers. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. They get sued. Now, you would never have that film now. No, oh, no. you couldn't. You know. How about the little kid saying little racist comments and stuff? Yeah, they were terribly racist in that movie. Yeah. But it was a great movie. It was like yeah. the funniest thing. It was a great movie. And then, but, the, you know, the next six were awful. <laughs> yeah. You know, when they were playing in the Astrodome. Then they went to mm. Japan. Right. Bad news bears go Tokyo. Oh. They just squeezed every <laughs> drop out of those children that they could. The kids are getting bigger and bigger. Especially Ogilvy. All right, let's uh, bring in uh, Nicole, the armpit girl, and Jill, her sister. Hawk has offered to uh, get into a uh, tequila drinking contest against them. Way to go, Hawk. Now, I haven't met these girls, but I bet you kill them in drinking. I don't know. When girls show up with their own tequila, <laughs> that's always a problem. <laughs> Okay, I know it's not a long walk from the green room right. to the studio, so I don't know why they're not here yet. This is like the eighth time I sent Joe Pooh for something, and he's disappeared in the abyss. All right, I also, I also want Wonder Boy called in here tonight. Okay. Wow, how hot these girls are, too. <laughs> they're very, very cute. They All should right. be hanging with us anyway. Yeah. You should be in the limo parties. That's what we hear. Really? Now, yeah. who's Nicole? I haven't met you yet. Hi, I'm Nicole. Uh, That's Nicole. Nicole. You and you're Jill. I'm Jill. I'm uh, Fezzy. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice now, your you. thing, uh, Nicole, is you're turned on by smelling armpits. That's right. Why do you think that is? Um... I don't know. It's just something, because that's where the uh, pheromones come from, I think. Uh-huh. And uh, you know what that is, right? Uh, hold on. Let me get, get sweet moss in here. Get the scientist. Yeah. I uh, no. bring her in from our lab, right? From I our quit. science, from our research and development. Hey, uh, sweet Melissa, pheromones. Yeah. What's the, What's the story on this? Well, pheromones, we release them, just like from our sweat. They're just little things that connect. We don't really smell them. Uh huh. But, but what do they, they do for us? They excite your brain. They can just you smell them. They go up your nose. Yeah. And then. They trigger things in your brain, and it makes you excited. All right, now I would I don't get excited when I smell anybody's armpit. No, it's not the, it's not the smell of an armpit. But yeah. let's say if someone was like during sex, you get you sweat, and that sort of sweat has that sort of pheromone to get you even more excited during sex. Let me explain this to you. Okay. I have sex like James Bond. I don't sweat at all, and I keep a tuxedo on the whole wow. time. Nice. I, the woman's naked, but I'm in a tuxedo and I have a martini. And usually right, so she's painted gold. So this is now. So you're a biologist. You got a master's. You can understand why she would get excited from someone's armpit. I can understand. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can. You know. It just gives you that extra. Like, oh yeah, I want this guy. Wow. Did yeah. you know this, Fez? I had no idea this happened. I, now I didn't know. So uh, girls should be more attracted to sweaty guys. Billy Staples should be doing great with the women. There's a flaw in your theory, <laughs> sweet Melissa. <laughs> and Fezzy, Fezzy, of course, can sweat in a snowstorm. I've seen it happen. <laughs> I try to make a snow angel at Mount. Fezzy, you're a natural sweater, right? You'll have a oh, problem with sweating. I just drip. I am always really, really too warm. Nicole and, would probably like you then. Yeah, Nicole would be crazy about you. I would. One time, the first time we met uh, Jeremy Coleman, we had a meeting, <laughs> and it was in the summertime, and he's like, oh, come on, on the in. Beach. And she said, he says, Fez, take off your jacket, and, you know, relax, we'll have this meeting, and Fez uh, is like, and, you know, he never wears a jacket, I actually gave him one of mine or something, right? And he's like, I can't do it, uh, the sweat. Uh. <laughs> and he's explaining, and I'm thinking, we're not going to New York, we don't get a gig. <laughs> As you know, I put on the jacket to cover the sweat, then I immediately confess, this jacket's covering my sweat. <laughs> and I'm thinking, we don't seem like the guys that can uh, uh, handle the uh, difficult pressures of being in market number one. So then I'm stuffed in a jacket. I'm so uncomfortable. I'm trying to wear a tie to this meeting. Yeah. First time we met Jeremy Coleman. So I'm just ready to explode. There's just bulges of skin hanging out everywhere that there could be out of this suit. And uh, so... Jeremy's sitting there. We order lunch. I order a salad. Like, like this is all I ever eat, Jeremy. I don't think you fell for that one either. Then I think you ended up eating half his sandwich. I did. Yeah. Right, so he didn't finish, so I ate it. Spilled off the plate. All right, let's get back uh, to the armpit girl, Nicole. Oh no. And I know that you might like Fez because he spent a lot. 
so at what age did you find out you were attracted to guys' armpits? I don't think I realized it, but you know when uh, you're dancing and yeah. someone's up close to you and they're like sticking their arms up and right. all dancing and you, you kind of get your face in there? I, I, don't, I don't know about that, Fezzy. Have you ever <laughs> put your face in someone's armpit while dancing? No, uh-uh, not even in a slow dance. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's why I guess that's where uh, you seem like, I like tall guys. You know so you the taller, like? you yeah. get right in, in line with the pit. Yeah. You like a tall guy putting his pit. I like a tall guy and... Yeah. yeah. Now, the only dancing like this I've ever seen was Eric from The Grind on MTV. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. I don't know who else. That's right. why all the girls love him. Dirty now, dancing, maybe? Dirty dancing? <laughs> I don't think you put an armpit. No. no, no all right, Hulk, no. go over. Hulk's pretty tall. Yeah. Yeah, go he's over, tall. Yeah, go over next door. Hulk is seven foot four. <laughs> he's very, very tall. Oh, no. Now, would you like to, uh, you like him to dance around and you can smell his pit? Or what? Would, how do you want to do this? Give me a little dance music, Roy. Yeah, shake it up. <laughs> and if you, it can't I, be, it can't be a raw pit. It has to be worked in a little bit. All right, yeah. All right, let's get all the guys on the show uh, moving, exercising a little bit. Who all wants to do this? Joe, are you in for the pit stop? He's in. If I don't have to exercise. Yeah, you got to. You got to move around <laughs> a little bit to get sweating a little bit. Either that, or I'll ask you a lot of personal questions until you start sweating. I want Billy Staples sweat. Yeah, Put him we on can the do bike. it either way. Joe's wearing we about his... eight shirts tonight, so he should be sweating. All right. Now, I also want to point out, who invited you in here tonight? Al? Yes. I, all this stuff shouldn't be figured out on the air. We should yeah. have had the guy sweaty. I would like to smell Al's armpits. Yeah. Well, yeah. he is like a doll. He that, has none. That's the smell of success, <laughs> my friend. All right. Now, you brought you girls also brought some. And, and what is your thing that you like to do, uh, Joe? Um, if I really like a guy, I like to uh, pick at him. Pick at him how? You like, like uh, make fun of scabs him? or like uh, <laughs> pimples and stuff like that. You like to pop pimples? You like to... Yeah, but only if I really like it. Like a guy with a black head or no, a scab? No, I'm not not like a pimple face, but, yeah. you know, just like occasionally. Just something you can pop a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. little something I can pick at. Now, do you do anything with the runoff there? Is... No, I usually try to make them eat it, but... Ew! Yeah. I think, you know what? I think Al's got a big chin zit, too. No, we asked him, and he said that he's taking medication for it's it, uh, and we might not want to so. touch it. He got one pimple he's and took medication. Yeah. Yeah, he... he uh, such a fat liar! He got a pimple, so he went to the emergency room. All right, Billy, we need you heated up for this girl. Okay. All right. I'll be up, going up and down the stairs. I'll be back in a little bit. I'll go get a good lather up. All right, uh, why don't you take a phone... <laughs> Okay. And you can uh, t go all the way down up top and back up here. Be nice and sweaty for us, okay? Okay, I'll be back. I'll give you a call. Okay. <laughs> all right, Francesca. Francesca, you're on Run of Fence. Hi, Francesca. Hi. How are you, honey? Good. How you doing? Pull Good. the gang. We get caught at 12709. Hey, darling, I want to just tell you, make sure you check your emails tonight. Okay, Very big email for the big-ass card holders. All right, I will. Um, I don't know about directly smelling armpits, but um, I do find uh, when you're having sex, sweaty, it does really turn you on. Is that right? Yes. I wish I wasn't so James Bond with that. A nice right? hot summer so cool. night yeah. with your mate. Oh, it's No, you don't really have an good. air conditioner? You and your mate? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like you're with an animal. <laughs> oh, Ronnie, you know who she's dating. Bright My eyes. fiance. <laughs> okay. No. My boyfriend. Yeah, your fiance. Yeah. Thank you, Let Nova. Me, I guess he's in... Uh, uh, on you know Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. That's where my fiance is. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, so you really like when they sweat all over you? Yeah, that that makes it, that intensifies it. I think that you would probably love uh, jail sex, both of you. <laughs> That's sweaty. Yeah, I wouldn't know. It gets very uh, sweaty. The problem is, it's you know mostly anal. So right. you know, <laughs> anal. Butt sweat is a little different than armpit sweat. So you're not interested in that, like in the, no. like sack sweat. No, 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 no. I don't think so. It's too cold in here. No one's getting sweaty. Uh, we <laughs> just, you just saw us uh, run. Uh, yeah, we way. sent the big man uh, up uh, and down the stairs. Uh, where's your tequila, boy? Where, where he hides his liquor. Oh, uh, yeah. So the Hulk said he would drink against Sorry, both of you. Are you big tequila drinkers? You like shots? Um, I like vodka more. Oh, you brought the tequila. What the I, hell would I know? Actually, that's my sister. She brought oh, the okay. So it's, you want to drink against the hunk? I'll drink. Yeah, we're all going to drink a little yeah, tequila. All, all right. Uh, it's, are we going to do doing shit? What are we, a Cuervo? No, I, uh, I step up. My friend uh, Chris helped me buy it today after work. That's yeah. what we did. Okay. We, we bought tequila. <laughs> We'd like the hawk uh, to maybe drink the worm. 
Hulk, would you eat the worm at the bottom? There's some uh, female nudity involved, maybe. Oh, <laughs> oh, he is smooth. He is so smooth. Fuzzy, there is not enough O's and smooth for the Hulk. <laughs> Wow. Why, would you girls uh, flash him so he'll eat the worm? I don't know about Come that. Come on. No, not when I can eat the worm and I don't have to flash anyone. And I'll get out. Both of them get out. <laughs> yeah. They went. The, the hawk answer. said uh, a nice thing here. You're not going to do this for the hawk? Uh, not at this moment. No. All right, we got to start doing shots then. Yeah. yeah. We'll work our way down to that worm. Hawk, either way, I, I don't know about these two girls yet. We're just meeting them and they're a little, you know, a little demanding. But I'll say this, not enough O's and smooth for you, my friend. Here's, uh... Bonnie Blunderson? Here's, uh, Joey. Joey, you I gotta get somebody on the phones. I gotta get somebody on the phones. Other than that chimp that's on there now? Yeah. I thought we trained him well. 877-692-1027. Hey, Joe. Joe, you're on our run of fence. Hey, Joe. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Hey, I want to meet this chick. Why is that? I got the worst stinking armpits. <laughs> All right, now, you like really stinking armpits? What's that? I'm talking to them. Oh, I'm sorry. You like really stinking armpits? What? Is it a body odor It's problem? a body odor, yeah. I sweat like crazy. Well, I don't... That's not the odor. It's do you the... sweat like crazy or do you... Does it smell? Oh, it smells, yeah. Like... Uh... My feet smell, too. Nice. But I can keep my shoes on if that offends you. You sound like a winner. Huh? Yeah. No, I'm what a winner. Come on, I'm a, big, I'm a big Italian guy. Oh, a big Australian Italian guy whose feet stink. That's not right, Fezzy. Fezzy, do me a favor. Call the Guinness Book. We found the first Italian guy who sweats a lot and his feet stink. <laughs> You're quite the catch, Joe. Hey, thanks. All right, so Joe. How are you, uh, Fez? All right, I'll put you on hold and see if the, if the girls want to hook up with you. Well, if it's going to be happening there, Gleet. Right. <laughs> now, didn't you... We know someone that um, worked at your club that only sweat on one pit. Yeah, the guy who used to manage my nightclub. He would get a gigantic sweat going only on one armpit. The other one would be dry. And, when he, and I mean, he would sweat right through his suit. Yeah. Right? The shirt. He had a T-shirt, the shirt, and then the uh, suit coat. Would sweat through, and then the other one it wouldn't. I used to ride them like there was no tomorrow. That was weird. What happened? Why is that, sweet Melissa? Scientist. I'm trying to re- <laughs> I'm trying to remember, but um, I don't remember. I think I remember on O and A they had a guy who sweat on half his body only. Really? And they mm-hmm. said it's it's normal. It's just normal rare. Where? It's that's for freaks and half know. world. <laughs> so that's maybe for Two Face. I, you know, I mean, uh, no, you suppo- if you if people who don't sweat, they're in danger, right, Melissa? Of course, there there are people who have to wear suits that air, that are like air conditioners. I would love to meet these people. Oh, I thought I have one of these suits. <laughs> <laughs> see if they got one in a double XL. Fez is uh, going to see his grandmother. It'll be loose. <laughs> I've always wanted the, one of those NFL mist machines in my house too. Oh. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Fezzy uh, spends uh, has a lot of problems with heat. He's much right. more uh, like Free Willy. He's he enjoys cold temperatures. He doesn't yeah. like the hot. You make me so hot. So uh, he needs something that's a little cooler. So now during the winter time, I won't put the heat on at all. Yeah. I do not use the heat at all during the winter, and I have a nice like two dollar electric bill. <laughs> Come summertime, boy, howdy, do I make up for it? <laughs> He's got his ass, he's, he has a couple of refrigerators, his ass is in one, and his forehead's in the other. My sister is actually telling me that one side of the body actually smells better to her than the other. Really? Is that right? Yeah. The left side. Scabby. Is it the same side on everybody? Yeah, the left. The left armpit always smells better. I, I don't know why. why. I don't know. We'll have to maybe do a, a no. scratch and sniff tonight to see the when, left when you're, to the right. Uh, when you're going to ba- scratch. When you're, uh, just scratch Billy <laughs> Rohan. When you're banging a guy, you try to keep your face in his pit? <laughs> you asked me that the other night. That yeah. would be kind of weird. That would be hard. Uh, uh, the whole thing is weird. The whole thing is weird. It's yeah. more of like a, a laying down when you get like all snuggled up in there. You uh-huh. sniff it away at that pit? Yeah. You, you get a deep breath. Now, do you like your pit sniff back? No. No. no Stay away sick. from hers. It's it stick. Yeah. No one's ever asked me. Hey, uh, odd. Hawk? <laughs> Hawk might be interested Hawk? if there's some female nudity involved. 
Hey, Lou. Oh. Lou, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Lou. How you doing, guys? Yeah. I heard Queen Melissa Moan the night. Oh, you did, did you? Yeah. You like skiing? You like skiing, Lou? Lou, your phone didn't crap out on you, did it? Wow, what's the deal there, Rory? Does he still win? What's the rule? Oh, there it goes. It just clicked off. Because he did everything to win the contest. The contest was won. The only problem is everyone's going to call in now saying they're Lou. Now that you remind them of that. Sure. <laughs> I I think we have to go for the second caller. since No, the I don't. I say, I say let Lou call I back. I say either Lou gets it or nobody wins. Right. Because okay. Lou won the contest. Okay. Yeah. Do we ever say on this contest you have to leave your phone number before your phone goes out? No. Now, I realize that somebody with a bad phone should not even attempt to call. Well, right. That's what I was thinking. So here's the thing. Well, because we got his voice on tape. I think it's lose prize, and he it's screwed it up. It's lose to lose. Yeah. So uh, if we don't believe Lou, nobody wins tonight. Okay. All right. And me and Armpit Girl end up skiing for the weekend. <laughs> nice. All right, Lou, what you would have won was a getaway package to Temament Resort in the Poconos. That package included three-day, two-night accommodations, meals, and ski lift tickets, all from Ten Minute Resort in the Poconos. All right, we sent Billy Staples to run the, the uh, stairs. Ah! Ah! I think I hear him. Ah! Ah! He's getting closer. He is. He's doing his best. Ah! 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 ah. 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 He's coming up. Dang, Billy! All right, Billy. <laughs> Billy, where are you now? Billy. Yeah, hi. How you doing, guys? Louder. I'm in the fourth floor landing. I ran down. I'm on my way back up. Are you sweating? Are, I, you, are you using loose phone? He sounds nice and sweaty. <laughs> no, I can't allow the stuff to get a signal, so I'm on my way back. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, you I need... sweat going and I'll come down. All right, you got to have a good sweat going for her, okay? You got it. I'm working. All right. Say it. No, I don't know what you're saying, Bill. <laughs> I swear he does. Ah, 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 I guarantee. Ah. He's at Scruffy Duffy's right now. I guarantee you. I actually, I got an email from him saying he's turning his life around, and thanks to you and I. Mm -hmm. Oh, welcome. I'll put that with the other 80 emails I got from him. <laughs> so you're not believing him this time? Nah. You're not falling for this one? Nope. Hey, uh, Robert, Robert, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys, listen, um, back when I was 17, I had this girlfriend. Yeah. She used to make me run around the block before we would have sex <laughs> because she would love to smell the sweat under my yam bag. Oh, oh. you're kidding, right? Yeah, no, I'm not. Sweat. I'm serious. And you're out it there. It really you're... turned her on. And you're out there running your ass off, right? Well, your well I used off. to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be in great shape. Now, that, was, oh, that your fir was that your first girlfriend? My first girlfriend, Now, yeah. were you shocked that other girls that you met later in life didn't make you run around the block a couple times so no. they could smell the yam bag? No, actually, they made me bathe a little bit more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that this girl's doing. Where the hell are you going? I gotta run. Baby, baby, I love you. Now smell the yam bag. There you go. Very funny, Robert. All right, guys. All right, see you All later. Right. <laughs> ah, ah. Billy, Billy, freaks around the house. Billy, Billy, freaks around the house. Billy seems to uh, have given it up, has he? Mm. That'd be nice. All right, 877-692-1027. I no longer care. We got him back. Take him off the air, all right? That uh, shirt makes me think he's not funny. <laughs> Hawk, let's do a quick shot before we get into this, so... Uh, We'll be doing some tequila shots with the girls. I think we're yeah. making new friends tonight. Yeah. You know what, Fuzzy? Yeah. We got Nicole here and her sister, Jill. Nicole, of course, loves the armpit sex. Love them. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jill likes popping zits and picking scabs. Yeah, more scabs. Popping uh, zits and picking scab is very good indeed. <laughs> we can make a song. Yeah, that's what I was doing. All right. Now, in Germany, you have to say, right. hop, hop, and yeah. then you bang the shot glass, and you say, Redenkopf, which means 
right to your head. That's okay. great, honey. Look around. You see Hitler anywhere? <laughs> this is America. Even right? Braun. <laughs> we're, uh, we're not playing Nazi drinking games. Yeah. They do a lot of things over in Germany uh, we don't do here. No, we don't do it. All right. All right. Go ahead. Say it, honey. You All can right. do it. Hope, hope. Red and Coke. Hope, She's hope. Cute, rum huh? and Coke. No. What'd you say? Oh, pop, well, I'm not German, but hop, hop, men and cup, which means drink your shot and it goes straight to your head. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Right. Now, you girls love the tequila shots, huh? Yeah. I love girls that uh, like hard liquor. <laughs> now, friendlier. That, now, when you go out at night, that's usually what you do, start slamming tequila shots and sniffing pit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we know this bar where you can get uh, four bucks for a shot and a beer. Really? A shot of tequila and a beer. So. so you're only at the best places. Only. That's right. Uh, Billy, are you sweaty yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Let's keep that going all through the hey, commercial it. break, okay? Oh, wonderful. Uh, it's it's dripping. We, got, we do have to take a break, Billy. When we come back, we'll be uh, checking Billy <laughs> to see his smell. Uh if he has a heart attack, I'll feel awful. I don't understand why he keeps slamming the door. Oh, look at this, the phones now. Al Dukes is the biggest a-hole in the history of sports. What has happened to the computer monitor that tells us who's on the phone? We, we... It's funny. It came back. It, they took it offline for some reason. Right. It came back, and with all the lines there is, the fonts were so big, there wasn't room to put one call in. Right. Now, in the meantime, it's because we take Billy off the phone for five minutes. Right. And no one can freaking cover. No one. The name is Al. Right. Al moved into it. Rory, I want you to talk with him after the show about having good shows. Okay. Will do. All right. Because right? right. I'm not going to yell at everybody. It's your staff. But I want you to deal with them. Okay. All right. Rory, it. here's your mission. Find one thing for me <laughs> that Al can do right. Okay. All right. You have until Monday. Okay. I'll tell you what he should be doing, working on. Getting a new pinball machine for Opie. Yeah. Why he would bring a broken pinball machine in here for Opie is beyond me. That thing looked like it was smashed with a hammer. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> you don't show up with a piece of crap like that and no, uh -uh. somebody and say enjoy it. It looks like someone put on goggles and beat that thing with a giant wooden mallet. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's Literally. awful. It's embarrassing to the whole show. I heard on Earth, too. That's how they do play pinball. <laughs> really? Hey, uh, when we come back, Roy wants to play a game show. All right. Let's find one thing Al can do right. No. Oh, it would be no. something now. We're playing a real game show. 877-692-1027. It's the Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez. 1027 WAW. Okay, people, pay attention. Sign in. Have your pictures and resumes ready. Here's your big chance for stardom. It's time to play Casting Call. We're Ron and Fez. Your chance to win an Al Dukes mud pack out of the big-ass prize closet. The way it'll work is Ronnie's going to read the cast of a movie. You just have to tell us what movie that cast belongs to. Fezzy, how about this cast here? It's uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, Donald Sutherland, Judd Hurst, M. Emmett Walsh, Timothy Hutton, and Mary Tyler Moore. Okay. Star-studded. Yeah, that's star-studded. All right. That's what you'd call an ensemble piece. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Hey, uh, John, John, you're on manifest. Hey, hey John. Manifest. Yeah, buddy. Uh, can you read it again, Ronnie? Sure, I can. It's uh, M. Emmett Walsh, Timmy Hutton, Elizabeth Montgomery, I'm sorry, Montgomery, Mary Tyler Moore, Donald Sutherland. No idea. Thanks anyway. Sorry. 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 Hope you win, but you didn't. Sorry. Sorry. Not a winner on casting call. So sorry. Hawk, be ready for another uh, shot there, buddy. Hey, Rob. Rob, you're on Ron and Fez? Hey, Rob. How you doing? Do you have an answer? Uh, how about the Wizard of Oz? Sorry. 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 Great film, but not for you. Sorry. Sorry. So, so Sorry. Uh, Lisa, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Lisa. Hi, guys. Yeah. Card holder 10520. Hoo-ah, hoo-ah, hoo-ah. Honey, right. make sure you check. check your... oh, I'm, I had the loop on. Oh. <laughs> hey, make sure you check your uh, big S email over the weekend. I already did. Oh, don't tell anybody. All right, I keep won't. it to yourself, would you? I will. It's exciting stuff, though, right? It is. Yeah. Okay. I'll be happy. 
Membership uh, has its privileges. Remember that. You got it. Did you send back? Do you think it's something you want to do? Uh, definitely. Okay, baby. Cool. Yeah. All right, do you know who the people are in this film? Uh, can you repeat it one more time? Donald Sutherland, Mary Tyler Moore, Judd Hurst, Timothy Hutton, and M. Emmett Walsh. Uh, I think, is it Ordinary People? There's the winning hey. cowbell, Lisa. Woo. Woo. That's the Oscar winner there, Fuzzy. That That's piece right. of crap film is much better than The Great Raging Bull by Marty Scorsese. That was the same year. Yeah, and apparently... Uh, Robert Redford, direct, because he's so attractive, mm -hmm. directing people in an after-school special <laughs> better than what has to probably yeah. be considered one of the ten best movies of all time, Raging Bull. And that's how it went that year at the Oscars. All right, uh, Hawk, get over here. You're going to do another shot with the uh, girls? Hawk, very funny during the last commercial break. He's done one shot. And, Ronnie, it's like he's writing his will in here yeah. during the commercial break. Uh, Rory, should I not be able to fulfill my duties? Yeah. I want you to make sure that the live spots get done. I, uh, uh, make sure this gets to my girl back home in Queens. <laughs> it's my liver. <laughs> All right, the lady's putting some salt on. Are you a salt guy, uh, Hawk, or you don't nah, care? I'll do it without. All right, let's do the famous German, uh, toast Why we're drinking, uh, you know, Mexican drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is for Dan. Hop, hop. Red and cup. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. Another shot of tequila. We have Nicole in here. Hi. And Let's... her sister, Jill. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Nicole gets turned on by smelling guys' armpits when they're really, really sweaty. Mm hmm And we've had Billy Staples run up and down the uh, steps. Oh, sweet and Lord. We forgot about Billy. He's been uh, running in, in the bathroom. <laughs> keeping the Keeping the girls out of the bathroom during the break. So let's bring Billy in. Staples! Now! It's always exciting, Fuzzy, if I have to beg and beg and beg to get our own staff on the air. I know, because there's uh, just so much time we have to spend with everyone. Oh, oh my God, my he's really God. doing it. He's really, really sweaty. He's completely sweaty now. That shirt oh looks wet God. from here. All right, come on over, Billy. No before, problem. Before you stop, uh, keep it going. Uh, let her smell the pit okay, and tell us what you feel. Wow, she got That's it right good. in there. That's good. Is it good? Wait, I got two it smelled... Well, the right, I don't... Oh, you're a left She's girl. turned off by the right. She likes the left side of people. It smells like laundry detergent. I think it should get in there and smell the uh, other side. Just, yeah, go ahead. Just, just for comparison. Go for the right? Okay, yeah. I'm going for the right. It's wet, but yeah. it doesn't smell bad. Did it wet your Billy, nose? congratulations. He's a keeper. <laughs> wow, and she got her face right in there, Ronnie. I really did. <laughs> Nicole was buried in Billy's pit. Oh, now, is this the kind of guy uh, that you think you could have sex with? He's hyperventilating right now, but... Yeah. All right, bring Al Dukes in. Smell his anal claps. Yeah, that's working for you. Uh, uh, Fezzy, he hasn't changed his underwear all week. Oh, no. Al, you're the next on top of this. We need you to run down to the lobby, Okay. back up, and keep it going. Uh, what's your natural smell, Al, would you say? Uh, I Confusion? Smell... No, I, I, <laughs> I, I think I smell pleasant. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not a, a Would you say way. Mount Pleasant? Maybe not Mount Pleasant, just the nice general smell. For some reason, I would picture out to smell like furniture polish. And then we'll also be picking that big duke on your on your chin. No, Jillian's going to do that. Disease yeah. thing. I yeah, can't what have kind of picture. disease you have? I'm not sure what it is, but I, I have medication. Topical. Bad ice cream? No. Why I are you eating some bad ice cream? No. And growing hair I don't or something. Eat ice cream. Is that what it is? Bad <laughs> ice cream? No. Oh, all right, well, let's get you running people. all the okay. way down and back. Get the phone so we can check in with you. Okay. And you're already in tip-top condition because you're ready for this fight. That's true. I might not even be sweating a lot. Yeah. Rory, are you interested in one of these deals either? Would you like to sweat it up a little bit and let uh, her check you out? Sure. sure. Yeah. I don't care. All right, fall out, though. I think the more the better. Here. Yeah. And, Rory, when you and Al are running down the stairwell... If there's some sort of nutty showgirl's accident and I'll happens to fall, I know nothing about it. Okay? You tripped him. <laughs> now I'm running the show. <laughs> that was the second best, best uh, dance uh, feature of all time, Fuzzy. Oh, yeah. What was the first? Saturday Night Fever 2 when John Travolta danced on Broadway and got his eye bloody. He got his eye bloody during a Broadway play because this is no longer a dance. It's a war out there. <laughs> oh, brother. 
Because a lot of disco dancers go on to be Broadway dancers. A lot of Italian guys in Brooklyn end up on Broadway in a dance number with their smelly feet. Right. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. I think it's time for another tequila shot. And the girls were just—they're uh, bugging me a little bit. These girls, I gotta—I gotta tell you, they're goers, Fez. I think oh yeah. Two new friends tonight. That's nice. The bottle's halfway gone. Yeah. Nicole and Jill, and of course our own Hawk enjoying shots with the girls. Hawk, are you normally a hard liquor drinker or more of a beer guy? I'm more of a beer guy, actually. Good. But, uh, That'll help you tonight. <laughs> I'm in for some hard stuff tonight. Sure he is. He's uh, he's uh, on the hard stuff. The girls do the traditional salt on the hand. Yeah, we like a little training wheels. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't blame it. But there's right. no lemon, so it's not. It's not early. perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, amateurs. <laughs> amateurs. He's already started. We'll see you later. Huh? I know. He he'll yeah. tell you exactly how he feels in another few shots. Trust me. Now, do you? Would you ladies eat the worm? You say um, the hawk. You ask the hawk. I've before. never eaten the worm. Me now, I, now the rumor or uh, kind of. Uh, old wives' tale was that if you ate the worm, you'd start to trip off it. Oh, but I've never uh, believed that to be true. Huh? Maybe you have to smoke it. It's so, um, I guess, soaked with alcohol. But you have no problem with that, do you? No, no problem at all. Uh, the hawk's the best. <laughs> all right, let's do the traditional German tequila shot. Oh, no. Thing. This one goes out to Dan, of course. Oh, of course. course. Taught her. Right. Maybe, maybe if he calls in, he could tell us really how to say it. Because uh, I'm probably right. butchering it. But right. anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm always looking forward for a call from Dan. <laughs> <laughs> we love Dan. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Strong. He he is. Is. I miss him saying he awesome. Is. Awesome. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready. Everyone say it with me. Uh -huh. Hop, hop. Come on. Come on. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, down it. Here we go. All right. Now uh, that shot of tequila gone. That's their third big shot of the night. It's almost like that's a Jacob. That's pretty thing. strong tequila. Yeah. I think that's four, actually. Yeah, four? Is four. it, Joe? Joe, um, you're keeping... Wow. I missed, okay. the, I missed nice. one there. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see one either. Uh. And remember, at the fourth shot, we all take our tops off. Oh, jeez. There he is. Mr. Twister. <laughs> He's getting whacked. <laughs> hey, you know him. <laughs> the officiator. The officiator, the I, hawk. Here comes... Uh, uh, Roy Hampton's back. Roy, you fe feel like you're sweaty enough? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, you beat, uh, you left down the dust? Yeah, I don't know where he went. Did you kick him? Oh, he didn't run the steps? No, he ran the steps, but... You I passed guess. him? Yeah, I guess I ran a little faster. Did something bad happen to him? Showgirl? I don't know. Are you sweaty enough? You need to get a little sweatier? Uh, I, I'm pretty sweaty. All right, Why don't you take, take off you... that first layer? Yeah. I hate to tell you this, Hawkeye, but take off the Hawaiian shirt. I know yeah. that's what you're known for. I'm at Rosie's. Rosie's bar. Yeah. All right, here he is. Now, are you getting a little excited just thinking that you're going to do this? Yeah, it's kind of close. Cool. Yeah. I've never right, had Al so uh, coming in like an American guy <laughs> running in a marathon. And look how turned on she is. Look how turned on she is. <laughs> it's like... Uh, Suddenly, you know, getting a handy to her. Oh, no. And Rory's like the Kenyan. He just yeah. beat the hell out of Al. You got it. Is he wet enough? Is he wet enough? That's a good one. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, he's got a good one. Better than Bill Billy's was very um, fabric softener-like. Right. So, in other words, he... Uh, he snuggles, that right, bear you see on TV. Let's right. bring oh, uh, Al Dukes over. Yeah. All right, ladies, get Look ready. Look at Al doing the John Travolta pose from uh, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> Mm, I don't know. I like Rory's best so far. All right, Rory. Wow. <laughs> Be nice. Nice work, Rory. Thank you. All Thank right, you. Uh, Joe. Joe. Joe Poo, do you want to uh, try to tie your shoes to work up a sweat? <laughs> Hello. I, I'm winded going to get out from down the hallway. <laughs> hey, uh, Joe, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks yeah. for taking the call. Yeah. I was wondering if uh, Al Dukes was going to sniff all of these out of after a few shots of tequila tonight. Uh, he would love to. That's his fantasy, but uh, <laughs> there's no way that he's uh, get brave enough to even go near Opie. He saw what happened to his uh, machine, his pinball machine. Al just lays up there in a the fetal position every now and then. Tell Wonder Boy I need a Coke. I don't know. He hasn't even checked on me for a while. I don't know whether he has no interest. He no longer cares about me. Wonder Boy, our new intern, who up until tonight in the Coke fiasco was doing fantastic. Right. Hey, uh, Larry, Larry, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, hey Larry. Larry. Yeah. 
Hey. Yeah. I know why Al uh, Wesley didn't like Al Pitts. Why is that? Because Al smoked gay. Now, I don't know about that. I would say the gay guys are probably better smelling, wouldn't you? Um, I'm not sure. Al had a very different odor. Smoke? It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a. <laughs> no, it wasn't Smoke. a sex odor. It was a. Uh, Almost like a hermaphrodite odor, or it was very asexual, kind yeah. of a summer's eve smell. <laughs> now, <laughs> that I don't know. I haven't I gotten that close to that. Now uh, let's check with uh, Melissa on this because she is the biologist. We know that Al doesn't like to have sex, and when he does, he tells us he doesn't laugh so long. Five pumps. This is all time thing. So, do you think, from a biology point of view, it would be worth it to do the experiment to see if maybe he is sexless? I think it would be good. We should do a genetic test to see if he is indeed a, a genetic male. I mean, I, <laughs> wow. Maybe he is um, one of those people who have like XXY, like three. Right. Sexual, something that makes him nope. less male like. But now, wouldn't he have is that common too? or is it uh, very, very rare? It's not extremely rare. Yeah. I mean, there, it, there are people out I, there. I had heard this about. Um, the Tony Curtis's daughter. Oh, Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. I was I had her mom on the show once mm -hmm. and I was going, All right, now your your daughter born with the extra chromosome and hermaphrodite quant. She went crazy. Yeah, because I think uh, Jamie sued because of that. Yeah, so that was never a true story. I don't know because yeah. I have people who work at hospitals that all tell me that yes. she's, she's gotten work there and you know but but you think it's one of these crazy urban myths, right? I was so embarrassed because I felt I had heard it so much, mm -hmm. like the Richard Gere gerbil story, which turned out to be uh, untrue. <laughs> and I what? say it to her mother, and her mother goes, excuse me, and I go, Fez says something. You know what I mean? I, hey, I'm trying to get out of anything, and I just blame it on Fez. <laughs> Who's her mother? Janet Lee? Janet Lee. the great Psycho? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Psycho, was, Psycho, that day. Psycho was the perfect name for it. What are you telling me? I know. We had a producer at the time who wrote it on our notes. Right, so yeah. We're doing a morning show, so I just say, oh, I understand that your uh, daughter was born with some extra gene. <laughs> She's like, what? You start going crazy, and I go, a Fez said something about it. Fez, you want to handle this? And then the urban myth of it all, that producer claimed she saw the whole thing on Donahue. Janet right. Lee and Jamie Lee Curtis Every, together on stage. Everybody <laughs> lies to protect their urban myth. Right. We don't like to believe it's not true. Right. All right, let's get another tequila shot going here. And I love the sisters. Mm -hmm. Who's the older sister? Who's the younger? You have to guess. I will guess. I'm going to say Jill, younger sister. Uh, Nicole, older sister. But not by much. I'm going to say something like 10, 11 months. I'll mm -hmm. go the opposite. I'll say Jill's older. But just the same kind of thing, like a 10, 11 oh, months? Oh, yeah, thing? yeah. It can't be more than 18 months. Actually, we're uh, four years apart, and uh, I'm younger. Wow. Oh, okay. Jill. Yeah. All right, so I was right, but... Wow, uh, sorry, Jill. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah, okay. thanks. Yeah, it's always been that way. I'm the older one. Yeah. yeah. We live very okay. close, though, don't we? Like almost like twins. Yeah, you do. You look right. like uh, drunken twin sisters. All right, let's drink. <laughs> this right. Like. Je Jen and Barbara. <laughs> yeah. We got in here tonight. <laughs> By the way, if you're four years older than her, you should have taught her not to smell her pits. It's, a, it's uh, disgusting. <laughs> no, I'll, she's I'll, four years older than me. I was. Uh, she's not setting a good example. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. I really, Al's armpits were very, uh, I've never smelled anything Plastic, like that before. Plastic, like you were smelling Tupperware like on a not. robot? You're very Liberace. disappointed in Al's what? armpits. I am. Oh, what you said? But, well, he's not a sexual person. He hasn't had sex much. He waited a long time. He didn't reach puberty until he was 24. <laughs> uh, as soon as the moment he reached puberty, his hair fell out, which is odd. Yeah. Uh, and then he said he doesn't have much sex with women, and when he does, he doesn't last very long. Five pumps is his record. I've heard. Maybe this is a, a revelation because. Like Melissa said, the um, yeah. pheromones are very prevalent, and Al doesn't seem to have any. Yeah, that's that very, very, very pheromoneless. Oh. Yeah, he's without the moans. I'm Weird. I'm sad for Al. Yeah, well, we all are. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's hit those On shots. so many levels. Hulk, uh, we're more than halfway through this uh, thing of tequila. Oh, you girls God. are holding up well. The Hulk looks wow. a little buzzed to me. Oh, he doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. It looks like we might lose him. <laughs> no, no, I'll outlast both of you. I think he'll take off his pants before I'll take off my shirt. <laughs> That's a challenge. That's because you're too young. The older one. <laughs> oh. She'll be in her skivvy suit. <laughs> skivvy. <laughs> he was in the Navy. By the way, Hawk, just because you like semen doesn't mean you're in the Navy. Oh, that's an Al Dukes joke. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're right. I'm sorry. Nobody's better than Hawk. Okay. 
All right. Uh, take a big hit off that, ladies. Here we go. Uh, the German hop, hop. Uh, hop, hop, and hip array. Oh, there you there go. go. Luckily, Ooh, I see we're... a tongue ring. Uh-huh. Where? <laughs> On his own. His own. Uh... Oh, boy. All right. Here's uh, Chris, who knows a little bit about this. And I'm very interested. And, you know, uh, Melissa, I know that you uh, are a biologist and you got the master's degree. And I don't know what we're going to do with genetic testing, but I would love to do it with that. I don't know whether we take off a finger or of the pinky toe, something like that. No, it's it's relatively easy because uh-huh. you, you just need to do a karyotype of his genetic. You just need to take some blood, uh-huh. and, and then they can do it from there. Would yeah. we have to remove his ovaries? <laughs> just one. Okay. You know, right. that's fair that's, enough, right? Yeah, that's I easy. Mean, I had the genetic testing done. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I found out I'm the direct descendant of Christ. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So, but I guess him and Mary Magdalene did something. I don't know, but I am his... Oh, and her, too. I am his heir. Yeah. I'm the son of a preacher, man. That's nice. Uh, here's uh, more armpit talk. Here's Chris. Chris, you're on the run of show. Hey, Chris. Hey. What's going on, dude? What's up? Hey. Oh, no. Hi. Hey. Are uh, you know Chris? Yeah, I work Great. with him. Oh, you do? Chris, you know Nicole? Yeah. Right. Who's working the phones now? Billy? He knows me, too. Let us know. Yeah. Duke, you still working the phones? <laughs> Work them, then, now. <laughs> oh, well, you're without sexual... Uh... <laughs> Hunt, just, Hunt just had to pull out a <laughs> cigarette out of his mouth just to scream, <laughs> Dukes. What are you doing with the cigarette, with the fezzerette? <laughs> That's my fezzerette you've been into. You know what time it is? What's that? It's twister time. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> wasted. Oh, my God. The He's officiator drunk. has spoken. Somebody hide the girls. <laughs> All right, uh, Chris, you work with these uh, ladies? Yeah. All right, tell us a little bit about them. Nicole loves the smell of working guys' armpits. All right, like a blue-collar guy? You like their armpits? Yeah. Well, what Chris, kind of work do you do, Chris? Chris is a blue-collar guy, oh. so right. I'm... Construction worker. I'm sure okay. he knows that uh, Nicole loves the smell of his armpit. All right. Wait a minute. I'm a blue collar guy. <laughs> All guys from Queens are blue collar guys. You All right. All right, he's got some oh, sweat going. Have... And it's on he's the left a... side, which she likes. Only the left side? Let's see your right side. He's got an extremely wet pit. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. That's what like. You like a wet pit? No. <laughs> what the fuck? Like You're crazy. crazy. Today. I'm... Well, yeah. we were talking about this all day at work, and I was nervous about coming, and, uh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so dirty. I'm done. All right, now, go ahead. You're going to bring I'll your pit your shirt Nicole, off. I think you should smell a hawk's yeah. armpit just, smell, just smell for the hell of it. Please. Smell under his hawk's wing. Oh, God. All right. He's so That's strong. a crow. All right, here we go. <laughs> crow. He's already crow. not that right 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 Now he's just mauling this girl with his armpit like the nasty boy. Well, she got him deep, though. I smell nothing. But you, but it it Worse like than Duke's? Bag. It looks like an old lady's vag, though. All right. Oh, my God. Why would say old lady's badge? It's so wrong. It's a Let's perfume. Let's not bring Allie into this. No, wait. Oh. <laughs> the honesty has begun. And sometimes when we drink, the honesty's too much. I'm telling you, I've been around the hawk when he's drinking. It'll Just happen. Be his friend. Because he gets mean. I know. Don't turn on him, Joe Poo. He just uh, He just knocked you on your ass. Verbally. All right. Uh... Uh, Chris, anything else to add here? She just smells your pit all day? No, nah, that's it. Is right. it you or everyone else at the it. job? No, everyone. Yeah? She goes around while we're working. Do, and, and she writes it down in a book, which one... Uh, no, you have best. a book, an armpit book? No, he's lying. You've okay. got to be fired. Have you ever rubbed one out while you're smelling a pit? <laughs> I don't think she really rubs one out, though. Never? No, that's more of a guy thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, women don't touch themselves. Fine. Thank you, Baz. (laughs) Call the New York Times. I've got a brand new uh, story for them. Stop the presses! Only men touch themselves. Ah, okay. Women, on the other hand. Only men rub one out. Hey! Hey! Shower head stocks plummet. How's it going, Fess? Thanks. Yeah, it's hard to hear you over a hawk. But uh, when you do get in a line, it's good. I'm not going to F with him. Yeah, I know. Not in this state. Hawk is the king when he's drinking. He's the uh, exact opposite of... Ah! 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 You get a little Elvis music here? I mean, come on. Produce the show. <laughs> now, why? Because I said oh, king. Oh, because you said king. Yeah. That's, cool. That's thinking. Hawk is the 
little toasty. Hulk is a little toasty. <laughs> he's doing the uh, beauty pageant wave he's right now. Here is uh, I mean, a England thing. Here's uh, Joel. Joel, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Joel. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Yeah, uh, the the reason why they say that you're, you're supposed to trip off the worm in the tequila uh -huh. is that uh, they, they traditionally made the uh, tequila with uh, stuff from cactus, you know, agave, right? Well, the worm would feed on the cactus and get mescaline in it. And the legend is that you eat the worm, you trip. I say. Uh -huh. So the worm actually went through life tripping. There you go. But uh -huh. the Mexicans say they Can put you imagine you're tripping and you're a worm? That would be the weirdest thing either, because you can't even use your hands to push your hair out of your face. <laughs> exactly. And the, the Mexicans say that uh, the reason why they put the worm in there is to trick the white man, because the, the worm is alive when they put it in there, and it releases fecal matter into the tequila. All right. Did you hear that, crap drinkers? So you're, you're, drink, you're, drinking, you're drinking mescaline-charged worm poo-poo drink. Well, we and love it. And that's where the phrase and comes from. And we say, let's have another. Here's mud in your eye. I say, thank you very much, man. Yes. All right, so the girls are ready for another. A hawk went off to find an out. Elvis album. Here comes the hawk. He's the king. <laughs> Where'd you wander off to, hawk? talking to Mary, and she was talking about her relationship with uh, Rossi from Promotions. What? I thought she was with Stinky. What happened with Kimmy Gibbler and Stinky? I think Stinky is her connection, and I think uh, Rossi's her soulmate or something. Really? So, uh, by connection, you mean weed connection? Well, those wouldn't be my words, because right. that would be illegal to say that. Okay. But Rossi is the one that she dates, and she scores from Stink. I thought for sure I heard Stinky were together. Yeah, I thought so, too. Here's what I love about Hawk. He's like one of those people that talks in his sleep. So, so you know, you hear the mumbling. You start writing things down and get all the information you can. When he drinks, he'll find out anything for you. <laughs> I've got two pairs of glasses now. Is the Hawk your biggest drinker here? Yeah, Hawk uh, unfortunately. is... Uh, well, I could out-drink Al Dukes. I could out-drink I think Pooh. you should uh, sign me up on your team because I think I can out-drink. I Al think that... Well, so far, it seems you. like you are. Hawk, none of the other girls are wearing two pairs of eyeglasses, <laughs> all right? If we're using that as a judge... That's right. ...as an indicator... I may be wearing two pairs of eyeglasses, but at the end of the night, I'll be only wearing one set of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and whose will that be? What? My own. Oh. He is adorable. Yeah, right. He's a drunk, <laughs> adorable bastard. Isn't he great? I'm a funny yeah. guy. Yeah, it's the exact opposite of ah, 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 ah. ah. All right, let's go. This is our what our <laughs> sixth uh, shot of, and shot is actually. You think it's more than that? Yeah. We're Where are we at, the Joe? Old one. Um, I think we're at our six. I would say yeah. six. Yeah. Okay, six. Yes, because you're not drunk. Yeah. We're. Oh, <laughs> I I think I am. You guys, uh, Hawk. She's got a little buzz. Actually, I better. think Hawk's a lot. No, I think yeah. I think you're doing a lot worse than me. Well, I'm I, drunk, more drunk than you, but I'll outlast you both, you girls tonight. I okay. think I think you got it. Someone's gonna end on? up naked. Yeah. It's not gonna be me. <laughs> Why? Is, why does this sound like a, a date rape from the home? <laughs> yes. Let's uh, do our uh, six big shots, Fuzzy, and we're about the, uh, I'd say almost nine tenths of the way through that bottle. And we're not starting on the next bottle that uh, Joe brought in. Yeah, Joe. Joe Poo Joe brought in well drinks. No. Yeah, no. Thanks, Thanks for revealing, peeling back the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Just listen to the hawk. He knows. He knows what he speaks. Fuzzy, we gotta get back to Queens as soon as we can. Blue collar all the way. Yeah, Queen seven one eight in the house. You load commercials. <laughs> what is blue collar about that? I work a second job. All right, Melissa, come on over. As long as you know him, Hawk, has he said more words tonight than the entire time you've known? Did I am I am. I am amazed with him tonight. This is this is insight to his brain, you know. Yeah. Isn't this the best? I love it. <laughs> I love uh, it when Hawk drinks. Well, let's do the shot. Unfortunately, Alyssa. he's too important to the show to do this every night. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right, someone's getting naked to me. It's not going to be me. Quit whispering. He's just rattling. He's just rattling off. I see naked people. <laughs> 
All right, everyone hit their shot. And what's nice is at this point in the competition, that German crap has just gone out the window. <laughs> yeah, it really has. Yeah. It's no yeah, right. Now, I need another yeah. um, armpit to smell, I think. You sure do. I think... Uh, are we out of pits? Joey Poo Poo Platter should <laughs> get out of Poo Poo Platter! <laughs> if I may be so bold. If I may be. Yeah. Thank you. The ladies, what are your nationalities for the listening audience? <laughs> oh, hawk is um, uh, uh, We're Russian and uh, Italian and Irish. All of the, uh, what are your percentages in terms of... <laughs> oh, please, Hawk. Oh, God. Actually, anyway. we do know the percentages if you need to know, Hawk. Huh? Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll play, play you later. The audience at home, playing uh, at home. Hold on. It's, uh, be all right. Supposedly your brother's on the uh, phone here, Hawk. It's Kermit. Kermit? Kermit, you're on Runa Fez. Oh, hello. This is Hawk's brother, Kermit the Frog. F you, Billy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is not Billy. Thank you for repealing and peeling back the curtain. <laughs> for peeling back the curtain. Hey, uh, we'll be doing best bets coming up next, Fezzi. Uh, big, big gambling weekend. Oh, yeah, the divisional playoffs this weekend. We'll see exactly what's going to happen. This is the uh, the most football we're going to have now for the rest of the year. Right, yeah. You, know, you got four uh, games this weekend, and then it dwindles. Right, then it dwindles. It's... Uh, it's pretty big, uh, exciting weekend. We'll be talking with Heckler about that. I think I'm going to, I'll decide at the last moment, but I think I'm probably still going to keep my uh, my home teams. Oh, okay. Yeah, tomorrow starts off with Philadelphia at Chicago, followed by the Raiders at New England. Mm -hmm. Then Sunday, you're looking at the Ravens at Pittsburgh, and then wrapping it up with Green Bay at St. Louis. I haven't seen enough of Chicago. I think Philly could beat them, so I might switch there. And I'm worried about that 10 points. I might go to Green Bay. So maybe I'll just trash can my whole. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long to talk you out of it. Yeah. So, Heckler, make sure you call us. All right. 877 692 We're out of Frequency. 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 It's time for this week's installment of Ron and Fez's Best Bet, brought to you by OnlineSportsBook.com. That's right, another football week, and currently in the studio we have Nicole and Jill. They're here. Nicole likes armpits, Jill likes picking scabs, and they're drinking against the Hawk. We're going to get to Dan from Hoboken and Heckler in just a second for, for their shot. best bets. Yeah, Time for that tequila shot, Fuzzy. You know, when I was talking to Hawk outside, he doesn't seem to be doing so good. I'm doing better than both of you girls. I oh, think, that's a good I one. I think the game's on. You know, right. I the game think, is on. I think oh. Hawk's fine because, Ronnie, during the break, he handed me a note he scribbled on a napkin. And it has a smiley face on it. And then it says, <laughs> Joe Poo has no talent. <laughs> and, uh. and that was... And Hawk, hey. as drunk as he is already... Was so sly about here, here, take this. Now, have you always felt that way, Hawk? Well, Joe's feeling sick tonight, and he's throwing up, he said. All right, now the... And uh, he's not even drinking. But, uh, you know, the smiling face we really <laughs> only use for any kind of online messages. Right. So you don't do that when you write a napkin to your co-workers. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go. Let's do that uh, we shot. Have, we have three shots, one with the worm, and Hawk rejected the worm. R All right. Oh, my God. The worm oh is in God, there. No. The worm's for the girls. Girls Joe like no, worms, if you no, know what I mean. No, no. no not really. No, uh -uh. What do you mean? I mean the so. long <laughs> yeah, This I'm is my else. first worm. What you guys? Are you going to do the worm? I don't know. I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little right. nervous. Boy, howdy. If there's any place to do a worm, it's on the Ron and Fez show. Oh, thank you very uh, much, Thank Connie. you, Nicole. All right, so she's going to bang this down with the worm. All right. Are you going to swallow it or chew? What do you suggest? I, I want to see it I like start take it between the lips and like kind of suck it all in right. and out. All oh right. Oh, my Paul. God. <laughs> dump, dump, Rudy, dump. Right, here she goes. She's, no, you don't, don't have to dump, dump Rudy, don't dump anything. Uh, Hawk's not running the show, Rudy. <laughs> it's Ryan Fish show, not the Hawk show. What do you think, you guys? I'm nervous. I'm excited it, for you, honey. You are? I'm excited you for you. swallow it yeah. and... Uh, I'm excited. Can we have a it's cheer? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, she's going to bang the worm down. <laughs> One, oh, that was go, great. Go, <laughs> thank you. Go. One, two, three. Oh my God! Oh, she's chewing. She, it. she chewed up the worm. <laughs> she better she's chew chewing it. it now. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it. Nicole, you now, Joe Poo, come here. Joe Why are you running out? Why are you running out of the 
room. the building. Joe, Joe, Joe ran right into the bathroom. What a big puss. She yeah. is a puss. <laughs> Joe Poo is the biggest puss I have ever seen. Pussy. I I call him Get Joey him back Pinkie here, Pinkie Dukes. And he's horrible. Oh, Get him really? back here. Oh, God. Pussy. He locked the door. He is vomiting in there. Oh, no. All right. Now, you other two got to do your shots here. Hey, uh, Nicole. Younger, <laughs> younger twin. You, uh, uh, you, younger twin. Younger twin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nicole, you'll Jill. always be welcome on this show. Nice. Because you, you sniffed armpits and you banged the worm down. This, what more can we ask of her, Fuzzy? I know. Here's the thing. You got your face in the pits, like Ronnie said, chewing up worms, and you made a tough guy 2002 Joe Poo puke like a woman. Yeah, beautiful. Like a woman. All right, here comes Joe back. Joe, why are you running and throwing up? No hurry to do the next uh, shot. Okay. We're in no hurry. All right, Joe, what happened with you? Well, my stomach's already bothering me, and I saw her crunch up the worm, and I thought she was going to spit it out. All right, Joe. So why did you run away? You realize... I felt like I had a puke. You realize that you didn't drink a worm or chew a worm, right? Right. Uh, Nicole, what did it taste like, the tequila worm? Um, it, it was plasticky. Yeah. Plasticky? Yeah. And uh, when I bit it down, it kind of... Uh, the juice was... <laughs> Kind of exploded. Yeah, kind of like uh, I think Joe might run to the bathroom stimulation again. aid. <laughs> and you know what, Joe? She wasn't able to get it all down. Yeah. She spit some out on this napkin. Yeah, get that napkin, Joe. Don't <laughs> toy with me. Don't toy with me. <laughs> he starts running for the door again. All right, let's do best bets, Fuzzy, real quick. We got Dan from Hoboken, our buddy, and the heckler. All right. Hey, guys, you're on Run a Fez. Up, boys? Hello, best bet boys. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Ron Fez, Melissa, and the Scratch and Sniff sisters. Welcome. All right. Hey. It has uh, been a long uh, season. We've uh, been betting the whole time. How are the bets going along, Heckler? All right. Well, starting from the bottom, Fezzy is at, for the whole year now, 20 and 25. Damn. That's a rough year. Uh, I had a bad Dan weekend. <laughs> Again. Is at 23 and 22. I think the college balls kind of sidetracked him a bit. Right. Um, I'm at 24 and 21, but the king of the ring is Ron Bennington at 28 and 17. Wow, nice. with the commanding four-game lead, which leads me to propose tonight that instead of just picking the games with the scores, we also add a little action and do the over and under. This way we'll have eight picks instead of four. Well, we, Vez and I didn't know that was happening. I wrote you an email, Mr. Uh, Bennington. You oh, should know about it. Uh, I didn't read my email. I don't answer it. Well, no. I think it's a good chance to get back, Fez. Why don't we just do this? I say that you guys won. Is that okay? Does everybody feel good about that? I just say uh, everyone else won. That's I want not to win fair the to Ronnie. Well, we're not doing that this week. We didn't know it was. Oh, you don't in. want to do the over and under? You don't want to think about it now on the air? Yeah, I'll, all right. I'll think too. about it. And we'll talk to you later. Okay. Talk. All right. Heck, we'll talk to you guys later on in the show. Because Fez and I haven't uh, had a chance well, if you to look want, here. we can just skip that and do it next week, then. Whatever you want to do. At least skip it, because, you know, some of us have lives that learn, you know, can't. Oh, look who's oh, talking oh, to us. Oh, they're turning on each other. Oh, like Mr. Drunk. Feedback oh, Boy, who sits at a computer for eight hours a day, instant feedbacking two shows, <laughs> and dating skanks. <laughs> I think the to, and, I didn't date any skanks, first of all. Well, don't start with me, Feedback <laughs> Boy. I thought you guys liked each other. Yeah, well, he's brave behind the keyboard. I come over to whole bulk and I give him one of those Sinatra shots right in the right in the snatch. Now I wow, and, this and, turned and ugly. stop with this gang thing. Nobody could be lovelier than the Gina from Hoboken, but we all exactly. have a crush on here. Yeah, she'll wise up one day. Hey, I like Dan. Dan's a great guy. All right, are we uh, going to do the picks or not? What are we doing? All right, why don't we just take one game at a time, and Ronnie, you can lead. I'll take the home teams. You're going to stick with your home team? I, at the last moment, I decided to go straight home teams. Oh, gee, that's a risk. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're giving up points wow. everywhere. Hey, hey, Hedler, why don't we just say you won? Ron, I, think you I don't want to win. I just want to have some fun with this. And here's the thing. Ronnie's in first place. I, want to give I wouldn't Fezzy argue with any systems. I want to give Fezzy a chance to catch up. That's all. All right, why don't you just say Fez won? It doesn't matter to me, Heckler. Well, it doesn't really matter to anybody, anyway. actually. This is killing the show, I'm sure. I know, but... It, well, he so you got girls be... drinking shots and sniffing armpits and eating worms. Mm -hmm. I mean, who wants to talk about football? Dude? I know, but right. we, we always do Thank it, so you. we took it time for you. And <laughs> we were going to stick with the system that we had. Now, you seem to be angry and no, switching I'm it around. Trying to, trying to contribute to the show, Ronnie. F. Heckler. Right, now Hawk. you got Hawk. Oh, man. thank you, Hawk. All right, now Hawk is playing Thumb Wars. Put your head in the, the toilet. You'll be there as soon as I 
enough. I love you, you, you jerk off. off. <laughs> All right, easy, now, easy. I'm going to put those guys on hold. I myself. never leave my apartment because I'm a dork. All right. <laughs> hold on. I'm telling everyone, please, do not raise the wrath of Hawk while he's been drinking. Right You'll now, end up on the wrong see, end of well, it. This is sweet. All right, sweet Melissa, sweet. I won. I just beat the older one, and that means <laughs> tops off. <laughs> no, we'll both take tops off, though. All right, you first. No, but then you have to go second. Okay. All right, ready? No, on three. All right, All right I'm on sorry, three. but your top comes off first. I and take then your shirt off. Before any of our tops comes off. We're the Gorelick sisters, and that's... All right, right you're not supposed matters. to use My your top. Last... You can call us Gorlocks. Thank All right, yeah. Gorlocks, you're dumping them off like the air. It. But it's their own name. Rory. All right, we're so, no one can say their last name on the air, is what your rule is. Poor so I, I, I'm not. Ron Bennington, that's my actual Ronnie, name. Ronnie, they're going to have to dump. That's different, because you're the host. Why is that different? It's so, who's ever saying their name. I, let's suppose I have Nick Cage on the show, right? Let's suppose we had a producer and Nicolas Cage did the show. I'd have to just say, Nick, from Los Angeles, you're on the air. I couldn't tell anybody. A person could come on the air and say their own last name. Well, it's because if anything uh, happens tonight, they can't, you know, then they'll have proof that they were actually there. It's a whole lot. What proof? Thing. It's just to protect our butts. What you, you don't talking know about? what you're talking about. What would happen? Someone's going to stab them? Well, maybe. Thank you, Rory. I'd rather stop them from being stabbed than worry about them giving out their own last name. We don't give out our own last name. You did, honey. We're Gorlocks. <laughs> <laughs> Dub! For all what you are we picking? Comics fans, Morlocks. Morlocks? Morlocks? <laughs> uh, Heckler? No. I did my picks. Fezzi, you want to do yours? I'll do mine. Uh, tomorrow, what's the spread? Two and a half, two? Uh, three, three points now. Three points. I like Chicago there. Uh, Patriots and the Raiders. I actually like the Patriots at home. I don't know what the okay. spread is. That's oh, three you're, points. wait a minute. You're picking the home team? Awful brave of you. <laughs> uh, I love Pittsburgh over the Ravens because I hate the Ravens so much. Someone has to stop five them. five and a half. And I'll tell you what. Whoever beats the Ravens will be my team in the Super Bowl. Dealers look good, Fezzi. And then I'll take Green Bay with that big ten-point spread. Ten and a half. Uh, Fezzi, I saw the New York Times today. They picked the Ravens to go all the way to the Super Bowl. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Again. All right, Danny, your turn. To me, Philly, Oakland, Pittsburgh, uh, St. Louis. And I'm taking the home teams. The thing you just complained about Ronnie doing. Well, I had it all figured out. I sat here for like six nights with the computer going. I'm doing statistics. I'm doing research. Heck yeah, but if you're behind him and you pick all the same games as him, you have no chance of catching him. Exactly. That's why I wanted to do over and under. I wanted to bet who wins the toying course. Over the top, Heckler. Come on. Heckler? Yeah, because this is so interesting that we should do more. Heckler, you won. No matter what happens, I'm saying <laughs> Heckler won. No, Heckler gets the seriously. championship yeah, cup. You know, it's something to do with the labor of love. You know, I like doing it with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm even going to give you a news flash that Bill Parcells isn't going to Tampa Bay. Shh. Heckler, okay. come on. Dan could stay on, but I say we get rid of Heckler. Uh, <laughs> Hawk is a little drunk, Heck. No, uh, listen, I've been there. I was young and, you know, drunk and eating worms, so... I don't like know yeah. why uh, the hawk ago. won't drink the worm. Oh, you gotta Joe eat the worm. Actually, took the worm All away right, from guys, me when I was about to drink it. And <coughs> I think it's what else? I don't see poo drinking here. It gets weirder every week. The uh, football season not ending a moment too soon for me. No, uh, uh, I was actually feeling remorse that you know you talked about the games are dwindling, right? And that soon all we're gonna have left uh, is the Pro Bowl. Uh, no. Now I'm thrilled. <laughs> Bring on spring training. <laughs> Fezzy, uh, I'm leading you in last place. You think we care? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Here's my impression of me. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're here's, leading. That's uh, because I'm winning this, and here's Fez. Because <laughs> I'm in last place. Right. <laughs> Yes, that'll keep me from watching and enjoying the games this week. All right, is this the last shot for the uh, ladies? The last the lovely, shot? We're just uh, getting warmed up. Wait. I know, but we just finished the bottle. Hawk has to drink the worm because I'm not doing two worms. I thought you All ate right, the wait. worm. Wait a minute. I, I, I ate another worm. worm. If I do a worm. There's two worms in that well, bottle? Yeah, drink there is. It's good tequila. It's there good. are two worms, and I was about to take the other one, but Joe, uh, Poopy Platter, <laughs> took it away from me. Yeah, Poopy Platter. What's wrong with you, Poopy Platter? 
He's killing the momentum of the show. Hey, I, Joe, do I not bring the show yet. down. He doesn't understand radio. We try to teach him, but he just doesn't get it. You still have your girlfriend dress you when you're 30 years old. You're 30? You're 30? I live at my own place. I don't live with my mom. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got me there, Let's Pete. Let's get this skill out of there. <laughs> All right. Take one last I'm hit. telling you, don't go Damn up it. against the hawk when he no, drinks. I can't no warn people me. enough. We that. got the younger one has to get drunk, too. Wait, well, I would like drunk. the other worm. Everybody's drunk, Hawk. But the no hawk. one will give me the other worm. Chili, you want it? Yes, I would love the other worm. Hawk, would it kill you to learn these girls' names? Joe Poo, it's, watch close. <laughs> Chili. Joe, come on over. I want you to watch. Chili Belly. Watch. I want you to watch Chili. Jilly. Jilly is going to be drinking the worm. All right, here we go. Hot and this, everyone can't look. my job calls me Jilly. All right, go ahead. Take a hit off. Jilly belly. Wait. All right. No, there's no salt Please. with the worm. God, Fez and I are yeah, so yeah, nice, yeah, and yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone around us is cruel. <laughs> Come on, ladies. We have surrounded ourselves with the worst people alive on this staff. Oh, Nicole the staff. and Jill. All right, here goes That's Jill. Right. Jill is... <laughs> <laughs> There's a, she's going to be drinking the worm. Here she goes. There she goes. Crunch it. Right for Joe Poo. Crunch Look it. it. Show it, it for Joe Poo. Show it to Joe. Joe. No, no. Keep swallowing. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. All right. The worm's in the bottom. It's still oh, the, the, the tequila. All right, Wait can, a minute. It's going to come out in the shot. The worm is still out. in the bottom of the shot no. glass. Just pop it in your mouth and start chewing it. Now show, show it. now show it to Joe. Open your mouth for Joe Poo. Kiss Joe Poo. Kiss Open him. Open your mouth for Joe Poo. Ah! <laughs> He would never kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> His look of disgust. Was All right, more very than nice, ladies. I love the sisters. <laughs> Nicole, yeah. the armpit girl. Thank, Thank you, guys. Love being on you show. guys were great. Thank you. You were wonderful. Thank Please you. come back anytime. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. They're leaving? Well, wait, they'll, they'll be hanging around. But right. for, we'll be hanging around, yeah. but thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. We had a great time show. with you tonight. Yes. Now, Hawk, this has kind of turned into uh, your show. No, uh, no. as the uh, Fez show. I know, but I mean, as it's Ron and Fez on and the Hawk. Here, you know, mm. some people on this show drink four uh, drinks. Ah, 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 ah. Have a problem. Ah. You and these girls kill a bottle of tequila together, uh, and you're in fine shape. And Hawk, I know you like the ladies. I, I'm a heterosexual, I'm like Al Duke, so... That's I, true. I, <laughs> All right, so uh, Al booked the dominatrix to come in tonight. And let's uh, bring her in, Al, and explain... That beast. Uh, the big Samoan beast. <laughs> here comes the dominatrix. How you doing, darling? Oh. Hello. Hi, what's, what's your, your name, name, sweetheart? Mr. Storm. Mr. Storm. I guess you shouldn't call a dominatrix sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to get shouldn't. one across the chop. Right. Mr. Storm. Not you, Susie. I love you. Oh, uh, thank you, mistress. Mistress Samoan. Now, now, Mistress, here's your new slave, and he's calling you a Samoan. <laughs> what is your ethnic background? I'm um, Spanish and Irish. Spanish and Irish. Spanish meaning South American or from Spain? <laughs> Both. Um, actually, Spanish from Spain and Puerto Rican. All so, right, how did you get into the dominatrix game? Um, she couldn't get the sexual <laughs> What? What did what? you say, Hog? She couldn't get regular heterosexual men, <laughs> so she went into that dom thing. He's a little drunk. Your slave is a little drunk to me. He, he helped drink a bottle of tequila. Yeah. Can sweet Melissa come sit near me? <laughs> no. Oh. No, because you'll crush her like a bug. You'll fly off with her and put her in your nest like she's a little field mouse. She's a little sweetie. I know. I know she is. Now, if you, you'll be nice to the dominatrix. The dominatrix is for you tonight. And she'll well, sit by you. Mr. Dawn, you have to... It's up to Mistress Dawn whether you get Melissa or not. Hello, Mistress Dawn. <laughs> I've been a good hawk. <laughs> 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 now, Melissa, did you know that uh, the hawk has a little crush on you? I had no idea. She likes shy guys, and I'm quiet. Oh, that's yeah. true. You sure are. That's your thing, <laughs> shy guys. What's he basing that on? <laughs> <laughs> I have no he's idea. Just How about he him. knows that he's is just beyond talking me. about himself. Melissa, is it true? It is indeed true. I had no idea. Oh. How he knows. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Stone, what have you brought with you for a hawk tonight? All right, you got some stuff. Mm. All right. Oh, Can I geez. get a little genitorture, some dominatrix music? Yeah, I like a little genitorture. You bastard lost Sin City CD, you bastards. <laughs> Who lost it? Who lost it? All right, Hawk, you, when you drink, you get extremely honest. 
Which one of these a-holes lost my Jenna Torture Sin City CD? It was on the cart a couple months ago, and now it's gone. So who do you think took it? I don't think it it got took as much as misplaced. All right. You can point a finger who you think lost it. What do you have there, mistress? What's uh, with you? I'm no, she doesn't have to wear anything. As uh, long Al. as they just... Al, you can do some producing here. <laughs> Al just screamed at the mistress. Yeah. But, I mean, you do it for her. She's never worked in radio. Okay? And I know you haven't either, but you're here all the time. Al just screamed at a guest. Come on, come on! God, if only we had have, some really um, hot mistresses. Oh! Mark, we're speaking nice. with Mistress Dawn right now. So, what do you have there, uh, Mistress? extremely cute. <laughs> Thank you. I have um a collar. A collar? And wrist cuffs. For huh. all of those of you playing at home, she's ethnic and very dark hair, dark eyes, very, very sensual, I think. <laughs> no all right, so that collar goes on the wrist and the neck all at once? Yes, it's all it one does. piece? Yep. Okay. Are you drunk. ready? Joe Poo first. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you who does like the mistress game. You and uh, Billy Staples were hitting it off out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> He didn't. He knew that you're not Samoan, right? So Billy likes this kind of stuff. Let's bring Billy in. Staples now. This uh, hawk is a little too pushy right. for the domination. Let's not people. lose hawk though. Let's uh, yeah he get hawk back in here when we can. I want to spank him. Who I hawk? Really do. Yes. The only problem, honey, is he'll come back swinging at you. That's <laughs> yeah. the only problem. Where Staples on the other hand, you kind of like being dominated, right? You were the other day. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. Now, Joe, you got upset when you saw Billy get slapped, right? Yeah, I don't like dominatrix. Why was that? I don't know. I think they're whores. <laughs> what is your problem with a woman hitting a guy? Well, I, I just don't think it's right. A, a woman should never hit a guy. But if he is enjoying it, first of all... He's a faggot. <laughs> I don't do anything no one does not want to do. Okay. She doesn't do what? Right? She doesn't do nothing no one don't want to not be done. <laughs> It's First, consensual. You know, you know. tell me what they want yeah. done, and I help fulfill their fantasy. Really? My fantasy is to get my uh, house painted. <laughs> now, no. I, take that off, Amari. No, we're not doing the website because it'll take till Monday. And I don't want, you know, so, we're already in a, a thing as it is. I mean, if you're, you're dumping out the last names that people give out themselves, I don't want that camera in here. Go ahead. What were you saying there? No, I, peop, the men that I see, they come to me. Samoans? No. <laughs> I keep a uh, hawk has thrown me off. They I thought I have a a paper here. Hawk gave me it says you're from the Isle of Tonga. Right? No, I'm not. Hawk, oh, stop that. She's not from the Isle of Tonga, and she is not Mistress Sika. All right, go ahead, Sika. All right, what are you gonna do with Billy? I'm gonna handcuff Billy. Well, not handcuff him. I'm gonna put the restraints on him. Okay, let's go ahead. Him. All right, go ahead and put the restraints on him and spank him. Billy has switched himself into his gym shorts why? because he enjoys this kind of thing. Oh. Billy, why the gym shorts? Uh, so I can feel it a little more. I had heavy jeans on before. All right, I don't know whether that collar is going to be uh, wide enough for Billy's neck. It looks like he's going to make it. Yeah. yeah. That's like trying to button the top button on his shirt. All right, I got to tell you, because of my little throat thing, I think I'd be freaking out if somebody put a dog collar around me. <laughs> it looks pretty Local tight. tight, yeah. Look at it, it's pinching his neck together. No, it's all right. It's like a rented tux. It's, pin it's pinching yeah. your gullet, your neck flap. <laughs> and you're turning a little purple already. Right, if it's got your gullet, he's not going to be able to keep his fish in there for later. <laughs> well, I'm getting hogtied here, guys. All right, now, you're a little nervous well. about that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a little nervous about being tied up? No, not 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 at all. Yeah. All right, here we go. So that doesn't make you uncomfortable. So what she's done is she's put the collar around his neck and his hands behind his back, and she's uh, shackling him in behind his. Let Allie come in if she wants. Now, Joe, could you see a woman doing this too? No, absolutely not. No, never happened. What? And the I smack my bitches up. Uh -huh. I don't get smacked. So what is your thought on female submissives? That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. You guys yeah. are lower than us, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you Sorry. are the top of the food chain, <laughs> cowboy. Mm -hmm. All right, now, what are you going to be doing? Uh, you got Billy all tied up, and uh, you're going to smack him with what? I'm going to leave A whip? Him. Yeah. Okay. A whip. First, I'm going to start with my hand. Right. Oh, okay. Billy, why do you like this? 
I don't know. You got to try something. Everything once, Ronnie. It's like yeah, I like stronger like you're, women. Seems like you're twi- trying it twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I turn around, you get whacked by somebody. Now, Joe, you, what would you do if a woman smacked you? Give her a shot right back. What would you do if a woman stepped up to you? After I hit her back? Yeah. I gave her a shot in the temple. She won't come back from that. You would hit someone in church. In that church. Is so wrong. No, I kick is. her right in the sea in church. <laughs> You put the sea in church. We're going to have to stop the mass. Someone kicked this woman in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. There we go. All right, so she's got him. Well, she's got <laughs> Billy kind of hogtied from his throat to his the back Billy. here. Could I please get some overweight slave music? <laughs> All right, here he we is go. all bent over. He is tied hands behind his back and collar around his throat. All right, now she's just rubbing his uh, butt a little bit. Why do you do that first? To let him know it's okay? Well, yeah, and... um. Or to see if he's ripe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little, like... I mix, like Wait, a hold on. Let me enjoy see if he's ripe, okay? <laughs> the fact of my, uh, uh, Billy being treated like a cantaloupe uh, has made me enjoy it. She's got to thump the melon. Well, it's like a mix of, like, sensuality and pain. Sensuality and pain from up in his butt. Okay. Yeah. You're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> and a genie might come out. <laughs> that ain't a genie. All right, there it is. Ooh. He's whacking him pretty good. All right. Ooh. Joe, you're next, so watch this. <gasps> Figure out how it's done. <laughs> I've been a bad boy. All right, now she's got like a big hairbrush. Turn backwards oh, so it's like right. a paddle. The big fuller brush. All right, here we go. Oh, she Ooh. smacked him pretty good. Ow. <laughs> oh, sorry. What's that? Apparently, he's not allowed to talk unless he gets permission. Yeah, so that's a good thing. So you hit him with the paddle. All right, let's get into the big uh, the cat of nine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. The big guns. Do me a favor. First, just uh, lay that across Joe Poo's. Smack Joe Poo <laughs> across see, the chest with it. I wouldn't do it because he wouldn't want Because he'd hit you back. No, well, then we'd be fighting in the studio if he's I would, on uh, Can I tell you something? I think you can take him, darling. <laughs> I think you can beat him. But I would cheer <laughs> for you. <laughs> It wouldn't be fun because he's not into it. Right. All right, let's uh, go. Uh... Oh. Bill, you feel anything there from the whip? Oh, yeah, I feel it. All right, the mistress, uh, mistress Dawn. Yeah, let's open Come on, honey, I'm paying your buddy out here. Let's go. Is that how it's like to you? God, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would hurt a little he bit. He really got smart mouth with you, Mister. Just let him have it. He's lucky I don't have my gag with me. I almost gagged. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Mistress. May I have another? Oh, he's asking for... Mistress, Billy Staples is there yeah. in you. He doesn't think you can put enough into it to hurt him. Really? I don't recall saying that. You just asked for another. I'm actually starting to miss Heckler. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress, what are we going to do to get, get you working on this? Anything at all? It seems like you take, uh, you know, you hit them once, then you take some time to think. No, it's not that. What I'm just you? because... You're nervous? That, and um, normally, like... You gotta be confident to be a mistress in this business. No, honey. I know, I know that, but yeah. I mean, I don't have like people. It's usually just me and the person that mm-hmm. comes to see me. All right, so you'd be better off if we all left. Would that help out, <laughs> no. Bezzy? Uh, we have to go now. Oh, okay. okay. The mistress is intimidated that we're watching. No, Odd. I normally, I, normally there isn't a lot of people around. Right. Mm. I mean, normally. Are the guys paying you for this? Yeah. How much? One fifty an hour. How much for a reach around? There is none. Really? There's no S-E-X. Oh. Boy, that's I mean, worth it. Ca- careful, the mistress <laughs> won't Most of them, like, one... 150 an hour. Most I thought the going rate was 110 for three hours. Most of them want to explore their fetishes. Right. Some, like, golden... Can I say it? Yeah, don't you give them a golden? Yeah. Now, would really? that not be considered sex? No, because... It's an exchange um, of fluids. It's not into... Well, so spitting in someone's mouth, but that's not sex, is it? Fuzz? No, not the way we and do it. And some like to cross dress. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. No. Is that where you got those clothes? 
<laughs> That's some guy's Zubaz leather pants. All right, this was great. Take Billy out the side. Take Billy right. out, and you'll be smacking him uh, on your uh, out there where nobody can see it. Right. You and Billy smacking. Yeah, you can take him into a room. Yeah. All right, there yeah. they go, Fuzzy. Uh, that just goes to show you not every uh, bit works out. No, uh uh-uh. uh. You know, when you have a timid. Yes. When, timid uh, person. When, when the dominatrix is. Uh, not domineering. Too, too shy to hit you. I you're, you're not getting your $150 worth. I never know that uh, guys would be here. <laughs> wow, that was bad. It's an hour booking. Al doesn't prep them before they come in. No, they have no clue. They are actually just thrown into a world right. that they do not know whatsoever. She, the, the dominatrix didn't know what headphones were. Right, and then Al yelled at her for that right. rather than putting them on her head and fix her up. Then Al, Al, start, Al start screaming at her, come on, come on, and then asked her for a, t- for a Tic Tac so he could go to sleep on the couch. <laughs> He's got to get back to work on his Tic Tacs. Rory Hampton's, of course, still looking for one thing that Al does right. Uh, let me tell you something. That uh, dominatrix using a bag of sugar as a Tic Tac. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I thought Leslie West was uh, back in the NEW. Those leather pants could go right back on the cap. I didn't know they were off. Well, here's the thing. Normally, when you... Uh, See, leather pants, they're not elastic banded at the top. Right, yeah, true. That one surprised me. You know, Morrison, when he got bigger, he got rid of the electric, uh, he got rid of the leather pants. 877-692-1027. It's the Ron Official. Ron Frequency. Frequency. 1027 WNEW. We're out of Fez. Remember, on Monday, it's your chance to win a getaway ski trip to Tamarind Resort in the Poconos. That package includes three-day, two-night accommodation, meals, and ski lift tickets. During the ONA show, you'll hear our sweet Melissa Moan of the Night promo. Remember that moan. Be the first caller when you hear it on our show on Monday. You're winning a ski trip giveaway. What is that? It sounds like the character doorbell, isn't it? Now, who would be at the character doorbell at this time of night? No all rain, baby. Sun all eyes. Turn me on before you go outside now. This is the Latter-day Jim Morrison weather report. <laughs> Ronnie, it's a Latter-day Jim Morrison weather report. Hey, all right, fellas. All Matt right. is at the door. Latter-day Jim Morrison. Hey, well, he's heavier than I remember. Much. From the uh, first album. Yeah, my new anchor seat is getting me a little fat in the butt. Oh, yeah, you're the weather anchor now, huh, Jim? Yeah, it's pretty great. All right, so what's the weather we're looking at, Latter-day Jim Morrison? Well, first, I would like to thank you for letting me do my weather report. Okay. My friendly cohorts, don't go outside in shorts. We won't, uh, Latter-day so Jim Morrison weather report. Right, right now. It tells us not to wear shorts in January. Right. It's 34 degrees, and it feels like 26. Why That's that? no kind of weather for a hard on <laughs> Who wants to come up here and love me? Not me. Who wants to come up here and love me? Uh, we're doing a show. All right. Why are you up there? <laughs> Why are you doing a weather report from the stage? I know. I want to tell you about the weather for tomorrow. Oh, good. All right, tomorrow's forecast. It's a Latter-day Jim Morrison weather report. On Texas radio, the home of the big beat. There's a chance of snow, and it will be partly cloudy. All right. But don't bundle up too much, because you'll sweat like a Saudi. (laughs) He's poetic. He really is. He knows the rhymes. It's going to be a little cold tomorrow. So, make sure you do bundle up in the snow. All right. All right, Jim Morrison drank too much before he came to do his weather report. Uh, How is it going to be in the whole tri-state area, Jim? Basically, it's going to be cold. 
Yeah. But this weather report is for New Haven, Connecticut, <laughs> in the United States of America. All right, bundle up, New Haven. Why, thank you, Jim. And it's going to be warm in Los Angeles, <laughs> also in the United States of America. You right. betcha. Say hello to Paul Rothschild. All right, we'll do. Thank all you. Right. Later Good night. night. All right. All right, Jets. Later day, Jim Morris. I wonder if the girls want to smell Jim Morris's <laughs> armpits. Now, why aren't I in there to punch in the walls? I have no idea. You think I would be? You should be. You have every right to. And kick some things. All right, that was our uh, Latter-day Jim Morrison weather report. It sure was. There he goes. Mm. Nice. Everybody likes uh, Jim Morrison, <laughs> but few people like that Latter-day Jim Morrison. Right. Uh, Not right. exactly nice. Now, I guess he's going to go check into the Morrison Hotel tonight. I don't know. Uh, Glenn, uh, on the answer feedback, says, Please tell me how they could put this garbage and filth on the radio. I have two young children that I can't even let listen to the radio anymore. What would you do if you had children? The latter-day Jim Morrison film? Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess that's what makes them mad. Huh. No, I'd say, uh... Probably put them to bed by now and, uh, not let them listen to this show. Well, I didn't know families gathered around the radio <laughs> like the old days, Fuzzy. Maybe they're waiting for latter-day Franklin Roosevelt's fireside chat. <laughs> they're waiting for the shadow. To come on. <laughs> the Shadow Knows. All right, let's play a game show. 877 692 1027. All right, it's already turned into a big party out there. We've completely lost the Hawk. Yeah. And the I, Hawk is uh, partying in the other room now. I was hoping the Hawk would be in here tonight, but no one's going to. Who's going to help me out with that one? All right, since Al's in a bad mood, bring Al in to play his new Carson Daly uh, show. All right, that's cool. Yeah. We should have played that last night for him, but uh, we have the type of situation, Fuzzy, where we have to cheer up our producers all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this will be for an Al Duke's Mud Pack. Yeah. Al, you want to play your new game show? Sure. Johnny Carson Daly? All right. It's the Johnny Carson Daly Game Show. It's the Johnny Carson Daily Game Show. With Ed McMahon, Doc Severinsen, and his orchestra. Okay. The uh, Al Dukes, for whatever reason, big, big fan of Johnny Carson and then also a big fan of Carson Daly. I guess just a big fan of late night. And, you know, it's actually talking about Carson Daly being the future yeah. of late night. Now, when we play this uh, show, how many answers do they have to answer, Al? Two. All right, two. <laughs> Two, uh, because two is the magic number <laughs> in comedy. Hey, Frank, Frank, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys, good evening. Yeah. Okay, uh, Frank, which Carson plans on starting his own record label? That would be not Johnny Carson, but Mr. MTV himself. Carson Daly, you forgot his Car name? Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> you can asking. keep stalling until you come up with it. Thank you very much, right here, Carson Daly. A young hotshot in this business, Ron A. A man who uh, uh, counts down the hits. Uh, spend some time with Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, <laughs> all right, and what else? Which Carson once worked at radio station WOW? Well, that, um, I'm going to say that was Johnny Carson. That's correct. Wow, there yeah, you have it. Winner right off the bat. Yes. Frank, yes. you know your Carsons. Thank you. I'd love to have a Kit Carson in that game. <laughs> I think it would be just, fun. Just to shake things up. That was the Johnny Carson Daily Game Show. That was the Johnny Carson Daily Game Show. Now, uh, sweet Melissa in with us tonight, Fuzzy. She's going to be cutting the promos. For next week, we're going to be giving away more ski trips next week, as well as uh, DVDs for uh, when you're the first caller, when you hear... Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sweet Melissa Moan. Mm-hmm. So she's going to do a studio session with us a little bit later on. But uh, we wanted to talk to her a little bit. We had her on the show last night. We found out something freakish about you. Something that... Did you think it was normal? Uh, yeah, normal enough that I didn't think I needed to bring it up. 
the uh, but <laughs> and yet I did. <laughs> and yet you never talked to any humans about this before. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. I just figured it was just one of those goofy games I played in my head. Now I, I Lord knows what goes on in that head of yours. We found out that Fez has given a color to each number, and maybe this is. Uh, something that actually has a name, right? Yes. I didn't want to say a disease, but a, a talent. Thank you. It's it's just how they classify a person who thinks how he does. Uh, and what would that be called? Synesthesia. 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 Yeah. Now, let me ask you about this. Some of these people said they can taste colors. Do you believe them? That's exactly, that's another thing that happens, yes. Yeah. They can taste colors and numbers or words. Yeah. You can taste numbers. Yeah. Now, have they ever tried to blindfold somebody? Have them taste a color or a word and have them come up with it? Yeah, they do all those sorts of tests, and, and if they're so closely associated, it always works. That mm. is bizarre. Well, then, you, you know, I mean, but it, this has got to be the rarest thing of all time, right? Um, It's abnormal. Yeah. But in the families that do have it, mm-hmm. it, it goes in every, like, every four generations, like, a girl will have it. It's, it's very me, strange. Any, right. uh, any chance of this, some of this stuff is, like evolution that's happening right now that maybe in the future we'll all be able to taste? Wow. Oh, I'm an X-Man. You know, for some reason, whatever reason, mm-hmm. as a biologist, I'm, prob- I'm sure that you don't think this way, but the rest of us act like, well, evolution is over and right. everything is perfect. Dogs, people, everything. And we've gone as far as we can. Yeah, and religion likes to think it stops, too. Right. right? They don't yeah. like to think that we're, we continue to evolve. But um, I always, I wonder, I mean... Why would it happen to them? But, you know, what, what benefit does it really serve? So it's, evolution would say that they would, um, it would serve a better purpose, and therefore they would live longer and make more children. I see. Mm. And I don't know that it's so much of a thing that would benefit m- more than us. I don't think Fezzi's better than us, that he has numbers that are also colors. Well, we don't <laughs> I could be the key to the well, future. Here's the only thing, though. We don't know where this is going. All we're seeing it from close up. We don't know what's happening in, in Fezzi's strain over the next 100, 1,000 years. Amazing. I, you know? I really wish I could see that far. This freak is on to something. <laughs> now, Thank my, you, Ronnie. <laughs> now, so there. My theory is people will have gigantic heads and little bodies like those people in Close Encounters. And much less fingers. That's yeah. What, I mean, let's, look at these pinkies. Yeah. Those are popcorn shrimp yeah. on my hands. Now, you got little stubs. Yeah. They are so useless, it's beyond reason. Yeah, it would be nice. And uh, maybe, like, people are getting, the, the pinkies are getting shorter, and soon right. they'll just be stubbies. Mine are popcorn shrimp. Look at them. Fezzy, we also found that with most people, you look at them and you see a number, you give them a number. I give each person, same with the colors, each, each single digit number, like one through nine, I see that each number having a color to go with it. And then I see people as being numbers, too. Mm-hmm. I, I associate a number with people. And now, does the number mean anything? No, it's not a rating, and it has nothing to do with physical characteristics, because, like, Rory Hampton mm-hmm. and Ron Bennington don't look alike. No. no. <laughs> All right? But to me, they're both, they both look like the number three. I see the number three in my head when no. I look at them. Now, you're thinking the great Oakland Raiders quarterback, Darryl LaMonica? Oh, there you go. The Mad Bomber? <laughs> it may be a personality thing. Like, maybe I've given the numbers personalities. All right, what do you give Melissa? Uh-huh. Melissa Melissa is a cute little two. A cute little two? Yeah. By the way, what's going on with you and Hawk? Is he still praying after? <laughs> no, he was talking to the other ladies now. Yeah. Hawk is an eight. <laughs> What does that mean? I have no idea, but Hawk is an eight. He is up there on the number scale. Yeah. You just like to group things. Like you want order. You want order to your to your life. And and Fez, life is madness. It's magic number. Oh, this is so cute. All right, this uh, this singer. What the hell was his name? That died. Uh, Shannon Hoon. Shannon Hoon. What number would you give him? Shannon Hoon. Shannon Hoon might have been a seven. Yeah. Uh, what about Albert Brooks? Albert Brooks? Yeah. <laughs> Albert Brooks is a five. <laughs> and wow. he laughs as he said yeah. it. <laughs> like it's his insight. Now, joke the weird thing him. is you give colors numbers, so do people mm. become colors? Um, No, not usually. Not really. Yeah. Johnny uh, Carson, what number? Johnny Carson is a one. Wow. And you don't even know why? No, uh-uh. It's he not because just... he's white, right? <laughs> No, because his hair is white. One is white. And one is white to me. 
Very strange. No, because here's the thing. Uh, my three, my three can either be a red or like a pink. Mm-hmm. And Ronnie is a three to me, but there's nothing red about Ronnie. I would, I doubt if I've ever seen Ronnie wear anything red. <laughs> well, you don't see me on Valentine's Day, my friend. <laughs> I come in dressed as a giant heart. <laughs> it's very bizarre to me, Fizz. Right. But interesting. I love your brain, Fezzy. That is incredible. I've never met anyone who's had the talent and so incredible. Well, you I never talent. realized it was something. I mean, I knew it was something that I always did. But, that's but I always figured it was just one of those little uh, games yeah. that you play in your mind. What's your neurons are crossing. So you're sort of, when you think numbers, your brain, that part of that, uh, excuse me. I understand. The part of your brain that also looks at colors is connected. So that's and it, it shouldn't be, or it just isn't in most people. It, Night, just, maybe. It, it just isn't in most people. Most people don't think like fuzzy. Okay. That's it's it's nothing wrong with your brain. All right. Here's here's something you would equate it to. Like if you saw a person, like if you saw a woman, and you said, "I bet she's uh, Melissa." If you're trying to guess her name. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the way it works. You think the same way? I never do that with people. Oh, damn. because even when people tell me their names, I don't remember. <laughs> I'll try to guess someone's name and their occupation. Here's my. I always uh, do the occupation. <laughs> here's my memory thing. I try to have either Fez or Wonder Boy around to use that person's name in front of me. Where did that Wonder Boy go tonight, Fezzy? Wonder Boy's got a boot camp party to go to. His little brother is going off to wherever uh, the Marines are going. All right. And I hope uh, Bush isn't done yet. Uh, Adrian uh, has a, a form of this uh, terrible mm-hmm. disease that Fuzzy has. <laughs> it's worked for me so far. What's it called again? How? How does it work for you? Syne- <laughs> it hasn't handicapped me. Synesthesia. 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 All right, Adrian, you're on Run of Fuzz. Hi. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Good. What can we do for you? Um, I have the same thing with colors, but it's with songs. There's certain songs that the, I see it in a color. All right. And I don't know why. It's just a certain color. It doesn't mean anything. Now it's God, a what a freak. Is it the whole song or? Yeah. You know, every time, here's what's weird. Every time I think of John Lee Hooker, I think of the blues. And I don't know <laughs> why he's not blue. He's black. You got a touch of the synesthesia. <laughs> I think I'm going yeah, to the bed, the, young man. <laughs> is right, that the same thing? All right, give us a song and, and a color that you would do. <laughs> okay. Uh, you were doing the doors before. Yeah, the doors. Yeah, you know, the end? Yeah. That's reds and oranges. Now you can see it as wow. you're hearing it. Wow. As, as it's on, that's the first thing. You know, like, I don't see an image. I see the color. And I don't know why. I always have. Now, when you say you see it, does it block out everything? Is it a color in your mind? No. It's just, it's like the first thing that pops in, into my head. I don't know if it's that it's associated with an emotion. I don't know if it's associated with a feeling. All right, give us, how about, how about the Beatles? Oh, okay. Pick a song. Yeah. Rocky Raccoon. Yeah, Rocky Raccoon. Rocky I was Raccoon thinking. is gonna be light. It's gonna be light colors. It's not gonna be blues. I would say it'd uh-huh. be something in the pinkish. All right. So wow, I- this is cool. Now, yeah. it's you- so nice to meet another. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> do you, do you, the the colors like dance for you, sort of, or do you just see different shades come up I in your head? I, I get the shades and the hues. That's really that right. you do yeah, have a part of it. Know. Now, would you yeah, say like, it was like a Rory Borealis look to you, where it's just kind of flashing? Ooh, Northern Light, yeah. yeah. No, like okay, listen, Jane's Addiction. That's a good example. Um, Jane's Addiction. Let's say okay. Jane says. Everybody knows All that right. song. Jane yes. says. Jane says would be blues and greens. Really? Wow. Huh. Yeah. Now I wonder if other people do this uh, when you as well. Go ahead. When you were little, did you uh, think of? Did you see this too? Like when you're singing "Mary Had a Little Lamb," does that? No, it wasn't something. Okay. It didn't start happening until a couple of years ago. Well, that's, that's, started that's interesting. Thing. She was hit by lightning. <laughs> right in her head. All right. What about this? Uh-huh. What if somebody covered a song? Okay. Would the same colors be for each artist? I say, like if James ah. Addiction did the Doors. Right. Well, I think she's seen a different with each song, right? Yeah. Well, it's not every single song. You know, like Goodbye Ruby Tuesday. Ruby Tuesday is not going to be red. But there's just, That's if good. I like the if I like the original song, I don't usually look at a cover the same way that I look at the original. So it wouldn't really apply. Which worries what worries me is that you didn't have this since you were little. Sinist- I might have and may have never really associated, but I've always. Uh, it's not association. Thought. It is the song is red and orange. There's no uh, yeah. other. It's, 
thing. It's just genetic. It's, yeah, you don't, you don't, it's like Fezzi, he doesn't know, he just, right. it's always right. been. He, yeah. That's so I've done that's this since different. I was little, little. So Fez is telling the truth. Where Adrian, on the other hand, is a bald-faced liar. <laughs> According to our scientist, Dr. Sweet Melissa. No, maybe I didn't discover it until later because my mind wasn't open enough to realize that's what was happening. You no, know, you, when you were learning about music when you were little, like with the tambourines and stuff, yeah. you would have seen the colors. It wouldn't have been something that you could turn on. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not saying you. Maybe you, Bron, you, Maybe you can see auras now. Maybe you feel. The Jane's addiction aura. She's a liar. Oh. I don't know, but I'm. <laughs> I don't. It's not. Uh, you would not be qualified like for a synesthesia, um, like test or something. Like you. So would I'm pseudo synesthetic. You, you. Yeah. You're. You're almost there. You're. you You have a cute story though. All right. Thanks, honey. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Thank you bye. Melissa, you're actually too nice to people. You know that. <laughs> this was a bald-faced liar trying to cop in on my partner's. Strange, freakish nature. <laughs> Thank you. 877-692-1027. It is the uh, Ron Fez show. Some of these other people mm. uh, uh, feel like you do. Mm. Uh, Scott, Scott, you're on Ron Fez? Hey, Scott. Yeah. Hey, I cannot believe it. I have been listening to you guys since day one. I have never called the show... I am compelled by this conversation. I cannot believe that Fez is my kindred spirit, although I'm strangely <laughs> comfortable with that. Thank you, Scotty. <laughs> it, I have had it since I was a kid. I see colors, and the first thing I do is immediately associate them with numbers, and it's been a constant. All right. it, the colors have never changed. All right, let me ask you this, Scott. What's the number five to you? Five is blue. Okay, so it's not like it's a universal color thing like no. with Fez. No, but several people called in last night, and uh -huh. seven is also green for me and for a number of other people they called in, which I think is kind of compelling. Right. Seven to me is a really yellowish green. No, seven is like forest green. All right, now that's my six. <laughs> forest green. One, one is black. Oh, okay, my one is white. My problem is you don't have a silver anywhere, Fez. No, there's no silver. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> there's, 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 there's no silver. But I see, I see a car. I mean, I remember going to summer camp when I was a kid, like five years old, like sleepaway camp for the yeah. first time. And I was in, I was in cabin four, and it's, the memory is always yellow to me. Oh, like, okay. We had to make these, um, we had to make these, um, like, um, Plaques, like these paintings yeah. that would go up on the cabin to represent our little troop. And I made mine in a completely yellow theme because that's what four meant to me. All right. And I was there five. You. All right. Thanks All right. a lot, Scott. You got it. I'd say it. it's very, very yeah. interesting. Here's a guy. Yeah. There's nothing, uh, no reason for him. I mean, there's no joke thing about the whole situation. No, I nothing. wish there was a punchline. Yeah, there's nothing to gain from anybody saying that they're doing this. But, you know, I, I talked to Horde King. And uh, he thinks that maybe a Fez took some drugs. What? Or some... Uh, <laughs> Your Majesty! <laughs> or maybe we locked Fez away. He would learn to be like the rest of us. Yeah. I'll quit seeing colors, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, here is uh, Serena. Serena, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Serena. Hi. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan. I'm a first-time caller. I'm a little nervous. Okay, darling. We're going to take care of you. <laughs> My uh, situation is a little bit different. My colors and numbers uh, take on male and female. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Rather than seeing uh, the numbers as colors, I see the numbers being male or female and colors being male and female. All right, so uh, let's see if we can work this out. What's the number six? Number six is female. What's the number four? Number four is female. All right, I know. I don't know how weird this would be because, you know, when you learn different languages, they'll call a table male yeah. or you know female. Right. Oh, right. like in yeah. Spanish, yeah. yeah. Every, every yeah. noun has and a gender. Spanish, yeah. and, I mean, I, I guess English is one of the few that we don't do that, right? Right. Yeah. Because we say the table. Right. right. We but don't we, change the the part well, up. Well, it occurred to us that since a table has no genitalia, <laughs> there's no reason to give it masculine or feminine. That's why we're the only superpower left. <laughs> It's just so weird. Like, I mad. see the, col the color red being female, the color blue being male. It's just weird. Now, uh, well, here's the, the thing that uh, freaks me out about this. And, uh, Serena, yeah. thank you very much. You did a very good job tonight. Thank okay? you. You did very yeah. good. 
Here's the thing that weirds me out about it, uh, is that now I kind of feel like, especially after taking all these calls, a little left out. Really? Like maybe there's something, you know, I mean, now I find out uh, there's this new kind of power uh, going on. I see the way Melissa's just fawning all over Fez, like he's some kind of, uh, you know, able to leap. Super genius. Super genius is able to leap into people's (laughs) dreams. And I have nothing. I love his brain. I'm sorry, Ronnie. Well, what is my brain? Like a toad to you? It's, <laughs> uh, literally, I just think nothing? That's not it. I just have never... This is so beautiful. I think his brain is so beautiful now. It's just insane. Beautiful or mad? It's all colorful. <laughs> <laughs> or is it mad? It's all mad. <laughs> He's so beautiful, I believe I have to kill him. Fives, attack now! <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's uh, Frank. Frank has a theory about you, Fez. That uh, I'm willing to have any uh, theory that shows Fez to be a fraud on this whole thing. Okay. Frank, you're on running, Fez. Hey, uh, Frank. Um, yeah, there was a study done on uh, one guy like a couple years ago. Um, it's in my book somewhere. I don't remember everything. But uh, the boss kind of uh, had a talk with this guy, and he thought he wasn't paying attention because the job involved taking notes and stuff like that. So the guy took him aside. He said, "Hey, listen." Why aren't you taking notes? And the guy spitted back every single bit of information perfectly the way it was said. And the guy was really impressed by this. So they did further studies on this guy. And it's pretty much like what Fez uh, does. It's um, when people said things or when people spoke to him, with pretty much every single word, an image popped in his head. So a person would remember, he would remember every single word that a person said, every single event, due to the images that popped in the, the person's head. I would love to like have Fez. that. But, you know, this is actually like, this is actual documented case, though. Um, I can't tell you who it is because I forget who it is. I learned this like you. <laughs> right, pretty much, you know? right. You've, you've got a Bennington brain, pretty much useless, except for to keep the heart pumping. Well, Ronnie, I didn't say that. No, it, yes, but did. says he uses his brain. So it, since it does use more areas of his brain, it does help him remember more things. Another you know? thing that annoys me is you call him Fezzy. And you call him May Ron or Mr. Bennington. <laughs> and I think he's showing favoritism here. I would love I to have that photographic mo- memory. Now, does Fez use more of his brain or... It's not that he uses more of his brain, but that uh, an area that we u- normally use, he also uses an, an additional area. Well, uh, uh, you- So his sense of right. smell and his like, sense of sight would be used together for, you know... This mic evil. smells like ass. <laughs> He's going to be joining the X-Men, and I'll be getting oh. a job as an accountant. No. <laughs> now, uh, mm. Melissa, do we think that Fez could, uh, the memory thing works? Or, you know, maybe science hasn't even decided why, why this is. It's just something some people have. Ronnie, remember that meeting we went to uh, not long after we got here? Yeah. Over to the other building? And I remembered, like, all 12 people's names in the meeting that yeah. we just met. See, that's beautiful. You, you Actually, what it was was I was so bored out of my skull in yeah. that meeting that that was my way of occupying myself and looking interested. I just memorized everyone's name. <laughs> isn't he great? Huh? I know. Seriously, isn't he great? No, and I dog you, crap. You want me to swoon all over, Fessy? It seems like you already are. Here's uh, Jane. Jane, you're on a Fez. Is this Jane Gray from the X-Men? Because <laughs> Fez is ready to join. Jane. Yes. You're on the uh, Ron and Freak show. What can we do for you tonight? Ron and Freak. <laughs> Ron and Freak. First of all, I want to say I love you guys. I think you're great. You mean when you say I love you guys, you mean I love Fez. I understand. I, I well, ahead. I love Fez only because I can relate to what he's saying about the color association with the numbers. Unbelievable. I, 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 it doesn't happen. Listen you to don't me. have listen, it. Listen. Listen to me. Wait. Listen. Listen. Because yeah. you're not going to believe me. I know you're not going to believe me. You're going to think I'm lying like the last caller. But I honestly can say that when I was listening last night to Fez saying one was white, two was blue, three blah, 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 I was, before he would even say the color, I would say the color. Yeah. Well, now, 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 do you think that you think this way or last night? No, no, because now I couldn't, if, if I didn't think this way, I wouldn't remember what he said, but I remember what he said. Okay. I, and not be. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even remembered it if I didn't think this way. Hmm. All, right, all right. What color is three? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna ask you. What color is five? Because I remember color five. Color is five. Yeah. I think of five as like red or. Well, that's orange. 
My five is always well, orange. it's sort of red. I mean, yeah. red and orange okay. is like... Now it's Jonathan you know, Edwards' time. Five is, is good... the one that I have absolutely no doubt about in my mind. It's like the centerpiece and everything <laughs> built out from there. Well, see, one is white, definitely. Two is definitely blue. I don't know why, but it is. And, I, I mean, I don't know, like three is like sort of like red and orange. No, actually, three is like blue, I think. Right. It's kind of, you know, it's weird, but I... You, I, I associate them. I do. Okay, well, it seems like there's a whole new weird thing going on here that Fez is the leader of. But you know what? The it's color like, brigade. Um, I'm the last human on the planet. <laughs> oh, by the way, Fez also has gills. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's like, not. I'm, I'm sorry, your guest, your guest name is? This is Sweet Melissa. Sweet Melissa. Yeah. Melissa. It's like you were saying about the last caller about how um, with a girl with the music. If she didn't think that way when she was little, then it's not something you could just turn on and off. I never thought that way before until I heard him last night saying that. That can't happen. Well, well, maybe you just connected to Fezzy. Yeah, maybe you love to Fezzy like we all do. I Jane, think. where will you be when the revolution begins? <laughs> and Connecticut. <laughs> all right, we'll come back with this. A lot of people are interested in it. Uh, we stumbled across it last night. It's very interesting to meet Fez. It's a lot of fun. For those yeah. of us that can do it. <laughs> I would love to be able to uh, do something like this. I feel like I'm being, uh, I'm being left yeah. out. I don't have gills. <laughs> We're still going to need you, Ronnie. For what? Uh, manual labor? As our drones. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's leaving. throwing that I'm down. leaving. Drony, come back. 877 <laughs> 692 It's the Ron and Freak Show. Fancy. Ron and Fancy. <laughs> 1027 WNEW. Finally, we get a chance to play some of my records. We're on and Fez. Fezzy uh, told us last night, shocked us, that he sees numbers as colors. Right. Each number, one through nine, has a specific color that goes with it. It just looks like it looks like that number should be that color. And people look like numbers, too. Now, I know a lot of retarded people have this, and they're <laughs> what? special in, in their own way. Oh, they wish. <laughs> but, uh, Fez, are you... Well, I guess you thought we all thought that way, right? I just assumed it was a game that I played in my own head. Okay, and I'm and shocked that, that any, anyone does it. And that anyone would just make up little games like that for themselves. Nice. I don't have one game in my own head that I play. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Rudy had something that he grabbed. Where's that paper that Rudy brought down? It has a big word of Rudy written on it. He uh, has his name written on it. Was trying to do a little bit of work here, but uh, we'll we'll check with some of these other people who see stuff. Here's uh, Ken. Ken, you are on the uh, Run and Fest show. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Ken. Hey. Give me a hey. Hi. How you doing? I got the uh, synesthesia, but it's with uh, sounds. Uh -huh. Have shapes and colors, and then uh, also uh, flavors have have shapes and colors. I actually did I, a paint. I, I did a painting once of a of a song. All right, now uh, give me a, a sound that in your mind, when you hear the sound, you see a shape in your mind. Yeah. Have you uh, heard of this before, Melissa? That's also another form of this. Yes. And, and the, uh, uh, sense, uh, synesthesia. Synesthesia. So. Wow. So the time I knew noticed I was some it was something that everybody didn't have. I was in, in the car and I was describing the flavor of of a beer, and uh, I said it was green, and the entire car got really really quiet and everybody looked at me. Sure, if you tell people the beer's green, <laughs> it better be St. Patty's Day. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it was it was kind of weird like that. Wow. And so, um, other like does music have a taste? Uh, no. But um, but okay. But sounds have a shape. But sounds have yeah. a shape. Now Fez once tasted the Backstreet Boys, and I don't know the whole situation. <laughs> That's different. But I know I had to get a lawyer for him. I had to get a lawyer. Yeah. Not ripe yet. Yeah, because that was the taste. Bad timing. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ken. See you. I don't even. Uh, I don't even know how to deal with this. No, John has a good question for you, Fezzy, and uh, I hope you can answer it. John, you're on hey, the Ron and Fez show. How are you? All right. Yes, I John. A, I got a question for you, Fez. Yes. What the hell would happen to you if you painted with numbers? Oh, I paint by the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried it? No, uh-uh. I think it would turn my world upside right, down. I'm going to bring a paint by numbers, oh. but you'll get all messed up and poop. 
Oh. I never finished. They the always paint. curse the gifted. I never uh, finished the paint by numbers. I don't know what it is, but I will <laughs> try. And then sooner or later, I say after some paint my own thing here. My aunt did a paint by numbers Last Supper one time, and that thing it looked like everyone at the Last Supper was melting. <laughs> yeah, right. Poor Jesus. All right, here Ken could probably help you out. He's a teacher. Ken, you're on Rana Fuzz. Ken. Fez's ability to associate colors with certain numbers is of an odd syndrome called queer's preference. Other symptoms that accompany this illness is constant counting of steps, repeated hand washing, overeating of sweets, washing, fake friends and mates, <laughs> excessively talking about what clothes match what sweater, etc. Thank you. Shows hazel. Thank you very much. That's a that's a good little bit you did, Ken. That was just great. I have to realize that people will be afraid of me. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm afraid that you'll try to turn me into a squid, Fezzi, and then eventually I'll just turn into water. That's why I'm leading a sentence, the Senate against the mutants. Senator Kelly. Yeah, Fez and I saw X-Men. The rest of the people just look at us. Yep. <laughs> Melissa still hasn't seen The Godfather yet. <laughs> I All right. the uh, second one. <laughs> Rudy, uh, just, you started with two? That's smart. <laughs> it's good to start everything with the second one. Good idea. Rudy said uh, that other than one, eight, and nine, the rest of the stuff that you do follows pretty much, Fez, at least two, three, four, five, and six, which you give colors to, pool balls. Yeah. Out of town. <laughs> right, okay. And eight and nine are just switched around. Uh, eight and nine are just switched around, and one. Well, nine is black to me, yeah. and eight is purple. So the nine ball is purple. Uh, the, yeah, the uh, nine ball is yellow, right? Yeah, the nine is yellow. Oh, so that's not switch. All right, and Close. eight. Yeah, thank you, Joe. You haven't you haven't helped out in an hour, and when you do, it's wrong. <laughs> that's what Rudy told me. <laughs> Rudy, it's very interesting, but take a look at that. But I don't think he learned this. Like I don't think. No, he. Was... he you didn't play pool as a kid, right? No, uh. Uh-uh. uh No, I did. We I, didn't have a pool table. My grandmother had a pool table. It's all I played, and uh, none of this ever stuck to me. You would have thought you would have developed it. I can't develop it. Didn't you learn this from Melissa? You're born with it. <laughs> You're either born with it or not, right? Like any kind of gene. Yes, that's correct. You just, as they're Maybe learning. Maybe if you applied yourself. <laughs> He lacks focus. Listen. Yes, Ronnie. Special about me. There's some. I'm that special because I'm the middle child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Kara has another uh, ridiculous thing. Kara, you're on Rana Fez. Hi, hi Kara. Hi, hi, Fezzy. Hey, how, how are you, baby? How are you? Good. Good. Okay, I wanted to tell you guys that um, when I was younger, I used to assign different personalities to each number, one through nine, and uh-huh. they each had a gender. Wow. And I just remember this yesterday when you guys. Right, let, let, let's say what was the personality of three? Okay, I don't remember three. I remember that nine was like this stupid ditzy woman, and eight was like one year younger than this guy who would get mad at her all the time. Uh huh. All right, this is John Hinckley stuff. This right. is madness on the edge of town. <laughs> I also have another question. Mm-hmm. It says, are you left-handed? No. Oh, okay. There that goes. Uh, my left hand is absolutely useless. We could la- lop it off today. It's a flipper. Really. <laughs> it's not a hand at all. It's a flipper. It's a claw. But a lot of ladies um, who have this are also left-handed. I'm left-handed. Why, why do you think that is? That's just... Le- being left-handed is also, I think, genetic, I think. Well, you know that the Catholics always felt like the devil I know. had the left-handed thing. So what we would try to do, Fezzi, is if we found a left-handed child, right, would be to tie that hand behind their back. Nice. <laughs> and make them use... <laughs> make them use God's hand, like Jesus. That'll show Satan. <laughs> That'll get him. Can you imagine just being a kid and thinking, I'm going to keep this evil hand behind your back. <laughs> hey, uh, Jim. Jim, you're on a Fez. Hey, Jim. Yeah, I was wondering, is this the uh, Ron and Rain Man show? Fuzzy, again, they're now uh, thinking of me as Tom Cruise and you as Rain Man. Again. Mm-hmm. Again. <laughs> Here's uh, Joe. Joe, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hi, Joe. I see numbers as dead people. <laughs> <laughs> number, number three was a little girl named Kristen that suffocated when somebody tickled her to death. And number four was a man named Boba who fell in the Sarlacc pit and got digested over the course of a thousand years. 
Thunder, 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 cat, kick, 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 kick. All the time. Just let him go. He's got all our beds. It's thunder, great. Thunder, 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 cat. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Richard has uh, an idea about your... Uh, Straightness. This says, Richard, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, hey Richard. Good evening, Melissa, Ron and Fez. How are you guys all doing? Good. On a lot of these shows, like Sesame Street, mm -hmm. uh, when they show the numbers, when they're teaching the kids numbers, they're showing them in colors. I guess this question would go to Melissa. Can that be subconsciously what they're seeing? Well, these students, yes, I, I, I know what you mean, that they see the colors and the numbers together, but to always think that one number is always going to be the same color. That's they don't do that really. I mean, they switch up the sued. colors. Yeah. Like, see, like, like one of the things that I was thinking of is a lot of people say, "Well, if it's a male, they think blue. Girl, they think pink." I understand that, but here, his uh, Melissa's thing is not exactly psychology. Hers is biology, mm -hmm. and studying the brain and different things happen. Mm -hmm. Where you, uh, one of the things that was on sixty minutes is that when one guy was smelling something. Well, and I don't know the brain, honey, at all, really. I, I wouldn't touch one. But the part of the, uh, like the optic part of the brain, stuff started happening there. Mm -hmm. So this blind person, through smelling something, the part of the brain where we see mm -hmm. was stimulated. That's cool. Now, that's kind of what you're doing, That's, Fez. that's right. what your brain's doing. That's what my brain's doing. Yes. And when I look at a, a single-digit number and see the color that goes with it. Yes. That's what my brain's doing. Your brain's it's lighting, starting to lighting up, spark up my optic section. Lighting up two places in your brain. And, um, Look how proud he is. I know. He's so smart. That's so cool. Oh, you then, know what? He's such a genius. Let's see him drive over a bridge tonight. Oh, me. I'm sorry. The genius panics on bridges. Maybe I'm smart enough to know they're not safe. <laughs> All right. I don't know why that is. You don't know why it is, right? You're just saying it happens. It just happens. Yeah. For some it's, people, it happens. It's just like I've also read a study that uh, people who learn sign language and, yeah. and that they can't hear, the hearing part of their brain lights up when they're doing the sign language. Really? Yeah. Is that because they're talking to themselves? That's because that's their, um, oh, not their hearing, their... Um, Understanding, yeah, no, the way they understand something. Language about. part. Right, so it's, okay, it's the their language, language But spoken hmm. language, it's... Hmm. I speak one language, and that's the international language of love. <laughs> Undoubtedly. And that's why I'm not using my brain for that. <laughs> All right, Ronnie, there's yeah. such a party going out on the green know, room. I'm sorry to interrupt insane. the no. conversation. But Joe Poo can't sit still with the attention deficit syndrome that he has. Right. He keeps going. He opens the door back and forth while we're on the air, and all of a sudden that party noise comes in. So I just wrote the note to Rory, tell Joe Poo to stop it. Right. What does Rory do? Goes out the door. Open right. the door to go get him. To go tell him. I think everyone's driving you quite mad tonight. They really are. And I have to realize that I'm just above all of them. Right. With my numbers and colors. Your brain's overworked. Do you realize thing. you just did the same thing that I got mad about? I just wanted to tell him that not to keep coming in and out like that. <laughs> but you opened the door. But you did it yourself. I know, but if he came back what's, in, then What's the story with the in. party out there? How's uh, Hawk? I wish I could see Hawk tonight at some point. He's he's drinking right now. He just <laughs> still drinking. Still drinking beers. He's talking to the ladies. Hawk pretty much uh, had what we would call a half day. Right, we, right. Uh, as we start now, and I'll, got out of work early. Monday is a big day for Fez. It's when his uh, religion celebrates their Christian uh, Christmas. What? <laughs> it's Martin Luther King Day, and Fez is a Lutheran. We don't. The Lutherans don't observe Martin Luther King Jr. Day as Christmas. Well, I mean, Martin Luther and King Day. It is not Martin Luther and King. Now, do you exchange presents? No. What no. Is it? It, has, it is not a church holiday. On the 10th day of Martin Luther King Day, a Lutheran gave to me. That is not how it works. Well, I don't know. My people are Christians. So are mine. Rory, I'll kill you for playing the Luther Vandross. Because he's was a Lutheran. <laughs> he is not a Lutheran. <laughs> I think Luke Wilson. Lutheran. No. <laughs> yeah, I divide people into Lutherans and Catholics. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> That's what we... I well, I try to divide by race and creed, <laughs> uh, sexual preference. Wait. 
It's important for me to put everybody in their own little box. You just like oil. Right, Hawk is walking around with a shot. <laughs> Hawk, what's that shot of? What's in that shot glass? Tequila. Hawk uh, got started on the uh, Lutheran party. We always do this before Fez's holiday. <laughs> we throw a little party last day of the year. Do not. <laughs> it's I went to not the a Christmas party. <laughs> Allie, come on, one shot. You're all banging there, don't you? Allie, one shot. Keep an eye on Joe, keep an eye on it, buddy. I got it. Okay. He better not be dragging me around like Billy Stevens. Your pants are down. Hey, Joe, Joe, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Oh, my God. Hey, guys. I've got a question for Luther and Fez. Yes. Do you guys call the devil James Earl Ray? No, we do not. Why not? I thought he killed... Your word. Wouldn't King. he be called Pontius Pilate then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we do not call James Earl Ray the devil. Although he's a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they are honoring him in Lauder Hill, Florida. <laughs> what happened there, Fuzzy? <laughs> that was a situation where, for their Martin Luther King Day on Monday, or actually uh, tomorrow is when they're having their big celebration, they wanted to uh, honor someone. Who has helped African-American causes mm-hmm. in this country, a voice of his people. They wanted to honor Mr. James Earl Jones. Wonderful man. I guess just for his work on Star Wars and CNN. Yeah. So what they did was they went and had a big plaque put together for him. They sent away to Texas for this plaque. It was uh, postage stamps put on a plaque of great black leaders in this country. So the inscription that came back on the plaque read, Thank you, James Earl Ray. For keeping the dream alive. In big, huge letters, Ronnie. Black people are so scared of black people. They know what they're doing. I know. And then so they uh, called this company in Texas where they ordered the plaque from. Texas, they killed Kennedy. The (laughs) state of Texas uh, killed Kennedy. (laughs) And that company's spokesperson said, or actually the owner said, it's a copy error. And he explained, hey, we have a lot of girls who don't speak English. And one of them isn't going to know James Earl Jones from a man on the moon. All right. <laughs> you got Ray and Jones. It's not Ray and James. It's, right. It's not even mixed. It's not even close. It's not a misspelling. which Right. Is, you know, right. It's not a typo. It's a wrong <laughs> word. All right. Steve has a... Uh, one last theory for you, Fez, and then we'll move on. Okay. Because, frankly, most of us are bored by whatever freakish... <laughs> Mutant abilities that you have. <laughs> and I, Good for one, powers. I, for one, don't plan on staying here for the mutant. Your, we- your, fi- your toes web? It was people like you that made me afraid to go to school. And now I guess I have to hit you with my feet. <laughs> the, only reason, the only reason why Fez wouldn't go to school is there wasn't a refrigerator and a TV there. Road and road! Why would he leave his home when he had the greatest two inventions ever? <laughs> All right, uh, Steve, you have a theory about Fez's mutant abilities? Yeah, Ron, Fez, I sure do. How you guys doing? Well, we're doing great. Right. That's good to hear. Um, if you look at the original 24-pack uh, of Crayola crayons, mm-hmm. the order starting from the bottom row from the left is very similar to the order that Fez associates the colors to the numbers. So you might want to look into that. All right, so maybe you think he learned how to count with crayons? Well, you know, I mean, subconsciously, when he took a crayon out, he might know, like, this is the third crayon, the fourth crayon, the first crayon. So you're saying the only number is the order they were packed in the, Th- that's the box? That's correct. The original order and they were packed. Fessy, did you always keep your crayons in the same order, like when you put them back? Oh, no, I was a pig. Yeah. You're, you're they were all over yeah. the place. Yeah, yeah that's true. Something. It's only the first day. Very good. Well, see, this is a smart one. Because I was just like, oh, well, it seems like this is a fraud. And let's stamp this. It's done. But, yes, nobody puts them things back in order. Right. right. All right, let me ask you guys this. And so okay. The topic. What was your favorite Crayola crown that you, I call it a crown. I'm sorry. It's from Philadelphia. What was the, your favorite color that you always used? My favorite color that I used the most was that yellow orange. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a thing for copper. I love the copper one. Oh, the metallic, metallic ones were great. Yeah. That was my favorite. The copper, because it was like sparkly. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you colored with it, it was really cool. That burnt sienna actually made me ill. 
It looked like the color of diarrhea. Yeah, that was a, the reddish brown. That's awful. That was just yeah. awful. Did you ever take the 64 pack and pretend that it was a football stadium and try to... It, doesn't it always <laughs> looked like a big stadium <laughs> standing. <laughs> People <to me>. sitting. <laughs> You're trying to get the wave going. Hey, American. <laughs> I'm a blue-green girl. You're a blue-green? Yes. Yeah. Did they have a turquoise? I guess you had to go bigger. But I would look yeah. for... You would... Uh, is right. Yeah, that was my favorite, the turquoise. I would go always go for a turquoise, too. That was a very beautiful color. And Rory's a big Dolphins fan. Yep, there you go. Uh-huh. Maybe there's something there. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that uh, crayon factory that you can go to? Is that somewhere in Pennsylvania? Yeah, it's somewhere in PA, but I don't think... Is it Crayola or is it different? Because did you ever, your mom ever get you, like, the really lame ones that... Yeah. Prang. <laughs> Prang. What are they called? Prang, P R A. They're not Crayolas. That was so good. You came up with that, Mom. They're Prangs, and I'm having I'm having people over. I'm having people over this afternoon to color with me. So at that point, you try to peel your labels off your crayons <laughs> and just put them in a container. Right. Like, oh, all the labels came off. Did you ever notice this when you did peel the label? New. It feels so good to I you when I rub it through your. Oh, I was- I love your to, fingers. I love that you used to go out on the road and set them out there in the hot summer sun. Melt them on they, rocks? They would melt. Oh, nice. <laughs> and when you, then you wouldn't have a uh, crayon. I know, but it was too cool to pass up. Sure. <laughs> I understand. Experiments. Do the kids even color anymore? I don't think they're that interested. You know, they have video games. Oh, you take they, the computer and color on there. Right. You can color on your computer. They got those blow pens. Uh, What's know. the blow pen? You blow in the pen and it shoots the color out the end of it. Really? That's what my uncle told me they do. No. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. told me. Yeah, I know. We were yeah. making art projects. And by the way, that's I not... I think his was a glue gun. By the way, that's not your uncle. <laughs> what? It's the man who mows your dad's lawn. <laughs> uncle Mowie. Uh, hey, so sick, isn't it? It's an awful thing. It's not funny. And it's actually hurtful to whoever it happened to. Dave, you're on Ronnie Fest. Hey, Ronnie Fest. Hey, Dave. Call number 5032. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! Dave, I suggest that you uh, check your emails tonight because the big ass card holders are finding out very, very early. All right. Some big I'll do important that. news. I wanted to talk about how great crayons smelled when you I loved them too. Oh, yeah. Bar. I was high on them. The best. Whatever yeah. happened to Jackie the Joke Man? Uh, Jackie hasn't called the show in a while, but I, think, right. uh, I think I'll be back. All right. Miss All right. him. Uh, yeah. Now, what? not long ago, they put out those Crayolas that had smell, actual smells to them. That's madness. And they had to take them back or quit making them because some of the smells were food, like the brown was right. chocolate. And you get kids chewing on a Crayola. Oh, I'd do it anyway. I'd do it no matter what it was. So they had to uh, put out <laughs> smells that weren't food, like brown is now wood or yeah, something they, like that. Yeah, they have new car smell in that, yeah. <laughs> 877-692-1027. Coming up in just a little while, Fezzi. Bon Jovi fans since day one. Bon Jovi fans since day one. Eddie Trunk will be in here. That's right. Friday Night Rocks will be kicking off in just a little bit. And you're listening to the Ron and Fez Show. Ron and Fez. 1027 W-A-W. The president chokes on a pretzel. Maybe I should cough up a visitorio. Well, well, well. President George W. Bush is making a full recovery from passing out after choking on a pretzel. And I haven't been this nervous about a president eating something since that time back in 87, when an already confused President Reagan got into the litter box, made himself a cake, and sat there singing happy birthday to me with kitty litter on his chin. But what really saw my pretzel stick is the fact that nothing is being done to prevent this from happening to President Bush again. After all, here's a man who chokes on sentences like they were ballpark pranks. Steps have to be taken to keep him from choking on food. I say first, we change his menu. No more hard snacks. No more nachos, fritos, doritos, or any of those other delicious Latin snacks that end in ooze. President Bush needs softer things to eat, like Jell-O brand gelatin jigglers. Those cans of Ensure that old people drink. Or really, really melted ice chips. You know, to be on the safe side, couldn't all the presidential snacks just be handled by IV? Secondly, portion control. I know the president is proud of where he's from, but does all his food have to be Texas-sized? 
he insists on his PB&J being cut into the shape of the Lone Star State, that he tries to eat the whole thing in one bite. Give him tinier snacks and let him pretend he's eating Rhode Island. Next, mealtime conversations. If President Bush gets upset while he's eating, he's more likely to choke again. So let's avoid topics that anger and frustrate him. Things like Osama bin Laden, Enron, and Long Division. Of course, we should be ready in case his choking reoccurs. Why was there no one to help the president? Where's that guy that carries the briefcase with the launch codes? Couldn't he have hit the president in the back with that briefcase to stop him from choking? Or at least been there to hold his arms up and make the president say, Baby, so we knew he could breathe. And if George W. is going to keep feigning now every time he sees a pretzel or a Pringles, it's time for a change of furniture in the White House. No more of this Martha Washington, Dolly Madison, Mary Todd Lincoln crap that the president could bust his face on. Let's replace that 200-year-old stuff and get some inflatable furniture from Spencer's Gifts or some nice soft beanbag chairs. Actually, I'd feel a whole lot better knowing the President of the United States was enjoying his meals by safely sitting in a ball pit. You know, this whole thing reminds me of growing up in Port Ellis Park, Florida, where if someone is choking, we do the mime lick maneuver, where you act like you're trapped in a box till someone comes to help. But it was there that I realized how scary someone choking on snacks could be. I remember Mother being out in our barn with our handyman named Bobo. I overheard Mother gagging. And from what Bobo was saying, apparently she was choking on a pair of nuts. She must have been really hungry, too, because she tried to get the whole sack in her mouth. But it sounded like Bobo got her a hot drink that helped her, because he said something about a tea bag being good for her. And that... Wait a minute. Mama put Bobo's sack into it. Anywho, President Bush, you gave us quite a scare with your choking and fainting. I was actually so upset that I longed for those days of the Clinton administration, where there was only the good kind of gagging in the White House. President Bush, be safe and know that we're behind you. It's the safest place to be if you start choking again. And let us all clear our own air passages and tell you we're here, we're queer, we will not disappear. This has been my presentorial. Thank you. Rory, could you go get Ronnie out of the green room and tell him the presentorial's done? The green room, don't you call that the number seven room, Fez? It's not it for you? <laughs> it could be the number seven room. It could be the number six room. Uh, but those lamps that are out there, yeah. they're more sevens. Sweet so Melissa, six. who's got the uh, master's in biology, is teaching us a little bit about it. Fez, his brain's a little different. He sees numbers as colors. Yeah, I see uh, each color having its own, each number having its own color. But each color doesn't have its own number. Like chartreuse wouldn't suddenly no. become 37. No, uh-uh. That's All right. too much. And you say this can happen, uh, Melissa, if he has this. Maybe he's making it up. Yeah, maybe he needs the attention. Here is uh, on the uh, Instant Feedback. What a turnaround! <laughs> this uh, is a question or a statement here. It says, Smithsonian Magazine. Are you familiar with that? Of course. Had a big article on this last year. Some people have the ability to keep notes with colored marks on a page and then read it back perfectly. Well, that's just a language. You can make up your own language, right? But they see. It's not Words? like... They don't make it up. That's just how it is for them. Like this, this R here, you know, they could just yeah. have a triangle and that would symbolize an R. And it's not like they make that up in their head. It's how they... They always saw R as a triangle and a triangle as an R. It's, it's synonymous with each That's other. That's like wingdings on your computer. Yeah, it is like wingdings. <laughs> <laughs> Fez sees the world as wingdings. <laughs> and, and ringdings. Well, that's so sad. That's the sad part. Uh, by the way, we uh, have a limo driver here to pick mm. you up tonight, Melissa. Excellent, thank you. From Shooting Star Limousines, they are the best. 631. 447-2727, shootingstarlimousines.com. Mm -hmm. Who's here tonight? Joe, Seth. who's here? Joe, bring him Andy. on in. Andy? Come on in, Andy. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Andy. Good to see you, buddy. How are you? This is uh, Sweet Melissa. She's the one you'll be taking back. How you doing, Sweet Melissa? Nice to meet you. I bet nobody gets more chicks than limo drivers. Uh, I'm willing to bet that. No, that's blown out of way to proportion. Is that right? Exactly. The Fezzi, you know, is the myth. That it's, you know, limo drivers, then bull, 
Uh, ball players and uh, bullfighters. Right, yeah. Oh, well, blown out proportional, that. right? Exactly. Andy, what makes a good limo driver? Um, you got to know the area, the town, That's and uh, true. Yeah. the streets to go up and down, and uh, the neighborhood, and who to cut off and who not to. And you know, right. the, the, no. Sarah, you know, you say that, but it's true. I hate nothing worse than having a driver who says, how do you get there? <laughs> that happened to me when I was in a friend's wedding. He couldn't find the, uh, and we had the groom in the car. And he's like, I can't, uh, you know, you got you to gotta plan these things out. Yeah, people get in the car and they tell me, you know, why are you going this way? I'm like, because I'm driving, you right, know. Right, good. Yeah, shut yeah. up back right. there. Right, the people in the back should just be relaxing. Yeah. They should be partying. Exactly. All right, Andy, if you smell pot coming from the back, do you feel the need to tell them the... Don't no, I just uh, go business. back there and join him, maybe. Or... <laughs> way to go, Andy. Because <laughs> Sweet Melissa always likes to smoke a joint on the way home. <laughs> All right, no problem. Well, it's good to meet you, Andy. All right, likewise. Andy, and, uh, uh, do you drive any big famous people lately? Uh, Yeah, my wife. <laughs> oh, nice. She's my hero. and Yeah. Aww. You know, I, I grew up with a Sandy Toth. Yeah? Yeah. Where's she from? Uh, don't worry about it. It's not the same person. <laughs> Uh, but she was beautiful. Shooting Star Limousine, 631-447-2727. Shooting Star Limousine. Best rates out on the island. Best rates. That's it. Nice. Thank you so much, Andy. All right. Thanks for having me. You're Appreciate a good man. It. All right. You're a limo driver. All right. You know what was weird was I was coming around back to the house, mm -hmm. and I saw some tracks too small for Andy to make. <laughs> and that weirded me out. You know what that was? Sandra Toth. She was the one. Who killed that guy <laughs> for her brother? Because little sister don't miss when she aim her gun. You know why? You know this whole thing that it seems like there in Georgia, you get, uh, you know, you get busted. Uh, you have the trial and you're hung all the same night. Right? Yeah. You're telling me she don't have the time <laughs> to say, wait a minute, I killed the guy, not my brother. Well, the judge got to get home. He's got supper, and it's going to be late or something like <laughs> yeah. that. And he can't be late? Let me tell you, the judge in that town's got blood stains on his hands. But well, don't trust your soul to know backwoods southern lawyers. Yeah, the, yeah right. That the is whole a, lesson. Right, it is a lesson. True. All right, Lena has a question for uh, our own Melissa. Mo uh, Lena. Hey, Lena. Hi. Hey, hey, Lena. What's up? Hi. How you doing? It's going on. Tell me your question, guys. I'm so excited that you're saying this because I remember when I was younger, I was uh, trying to get to sleep and all I could see was all blue. You know how a TV screen turns all blue mm -hmm. when you got v VCR? And I, there were shapes just like square, circle, da 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 like that. You I'm trying to put all. my finger on it and it's like bouncing off. Like I can't just say what one it was. All right, so you... Well, thank you, Carol Ann. You see... <laughs> Go into the lot. <laughs> yes. I just couldn't find the lot. No, and um, I'm just, it just confuses me because so many different things come at one time for me. Like, you're saying taste. You come a lot. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> right now, I'm missing. Keep going. Uh, no. Uh, um, I, so you sh see colors and shapes. Yeah, and and uh, mostly it's like emotions, shape, and colors, like all together. Are you left-handed? Are you? No. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Well, I see people as money, and whatever I can get out of them. Oh, it's not time to go. I just thought that would get her off the phone. <laughs> Smart. <buddy. laughs> we can do that all the time now. That could be the new bit. <laughs> well, Melissa, uh, six thirty-five. We gotta begin now. <laughs>